What's up, everybody? And welcome back to the Goodest Cast. And on this episode, we have Aaron Parker, who is an absolute legend, OG, stunt driver. He's been drifting forever, TV host. He was on Hyperdrive. I mean, FD license, like, dude's done it all. And sitting down and talking to him, getting to learn his, like, backstory and, like, kind of how he approaches things, I found very insightful, super positive dude. Lots of, like, really good storytelling and just like good information on like how to progress in life so i hope you guys enjoyed as much as i did check it out aaron parker what's up everybody welcome back to the tire streets ad just kidding tire streets you guys know what to do if you've listened to the podcast ever they have sponsored pretty much every episode so if they like us we like you we want you to get a good deal on tires they make good stuff it's a symbiotic relationship i think is what they call that there's a link in the description below check it out click on that it gives us credit it lets them know that you fuck with the goodest cast also they got lots of good stuff you need tires for your baby mama's freaking mpv mazda i don't know the batmobile needs some mud terrains I, whatever i don't know don't ask questions tire streets get yourself a deal Good as 651 gets you 20% off 651s. Good as 15 gets you 15% off everything else. And honestly, they always have big deals going on. So like, even if you click that link and my discount code doesn't work, freaking, it still gives us credit. We love credit. It's how you pay for drifting, obviously. Shout out Tire Streets. Shout out you guys. Run it up. Welcome, welcome to the new new Goodest Cast headquarters yeah, studio. Chris in it, <laughs> dude. I'm so pumped to be number one yeah. with the new stuff. Yeah, yeah, new stuff. Yeah, you're. I mean, you're royalty in the, in the no. car community, so we got to roll out the red carpet. Nah, I don't know about the royalty. I think I just uh, kind of stand out just because of like the way you go out about things sometimes, yeah. and then uh, you know, loud car, lot yeah. of attention. And I always think about that. Like, if I would have just never painted the car, honestly, it wouldn't have drawn any attention. Yeah, the the lightning was yeah a big <laughs> moment. It was uh, that whole situation was so awesome because I, you know, building these cars, and you're probably the same. You have like this inspiration, like this Japanese influence. And you're like, man, the, their cars always look so good, you know. And then uh, what I wanted to achieve was kind of like going to break the bank. And then, uh, you know, fast forward, the car was like ripping already. And uh, like this lady just DMs me on Instagram. Hey, uh, is this Aaron Parker? And I was like, well, obviously you just, you know, DM'd Aaron Parker. Uh, (laughs) Yeah, yeah, it is. Oh, we're doing this TV show and, you know, uh, we'd like you to come and bring your RX-7. And I was like, oh, okay, well, you know, give me a phone call. So we talked about it. And turns out she was casting for uh, Netflix Hyperdrive. And uh, some of the talent people or maybe the hosts had said, hey, we need an RX-7. It's like the coolest car, which they probably got right. Well, <laughs> I love them. Yeah. And, uh, Depends on who you ask, but most people <laughs> would agree. Yeah, yeah. And uh, she said she clicked on the RX-7 hashtag and my car kept popping up. Mm, so No uh, way. Yeah, lucky algorithmic uh, RX-7. And at the time, I remember I was like, dude, hashtags, that's it. Keep putting RX-7 on, on everything. And uh, yeah, I did this little interview and then I showed them my car and they're like, oh, yeah, we're going to have it. And so they actually painted the car. They paid for me to paint the car and wrap it. So that was like, I mean, that's like the dream, right? Just like yeah. be able to do it all at once because you start driving the car and it's wrecked. Yeah. Right. But if you can do it all at once, you know, usually do it, but usually think like, oh, I'll just final wrap it. But like paint's like the ultimate, like beautiful, yep. you know. So I got to choose a sweet paint and yeah, then. Because the uh, color was sick. Like, yeah, dude, it just hits home, you know. Yeah. And uh, Dave from Super Wow was a good buddy of mine. Um, and he was, I was like, dude, how do we make this stand out? And he's like, well, what do you want? And I was like, it's got to be lightning, but it can't be like the wrong cheesy, lightning. Yeah. It has to be like. A hit, a full hit. Yeah. Dude, we went for like Because you, you could miss so <laughs> yes, hard yes. trying to do that. Yeah, yeah. Well, and we, I think we did like probably like six or seven uh, variations of it. And then it was always like smaller, uh, you know, smaller overlay. And like it has – like I want it to fan over the car. Like no dead spots. You know, I want it to be there. But like if you glance at it, you wouldn't notice it until you stared at the car. Then you'd be like, damn, it looks cool. 
And uh, finally, we landed on it. It was like, I think that whole process took us maybe two and a half, three weeks, but it was nonstop. And then, uh, yeah, the car went into paint, and I pulled it straight out of paint, uh, unwrapped, and I hightailed it all the way to the East Coast from California to, where's that? Where's the Kodak Theater? In uh, upstate New York? Yeah, yeah, upstate New York. That's a um, mission. Dude, it was a haul because I had, you know, 24 foot trailer. Yeah. And then my truck went by myself, picked up Dave halfway because he flew in, you know, and then he was so tired. He was supposed to drive some, but he was so tired that he just like slept for like two days, <laughs> <laughs> which was fine. And then we got there and we pulled it out of the, the trailer. And I just remember thinking, I was like, dude, the car's never going to be that clean again, you know, because it's just beautiful, fuchsia pink, hot. Yeah. And then they're like, all right. Uh, you know, bring it over here and they'll wrap it. And then I looked at Dave and I was like, dude, are they going to screw it up? And he's like, no, dude, I already looked into them. They're good. And it was good because I didn't have to like check, you know, yeah. with, we, well, yeah, that's a big moment too. Huge, huge. You know, yeah. they could totally destroy it. Even though he gave him like a, a how to, yeah. you know, you've, you've seen it a million times, yeah. the how to, and then you like, dude, this was supposed to be on the other side. Yeah way wrong spot you get the, the bootleg the version of what it's yeah, supposed yeah. to be like, oh, and then you can't redo it because yeah. all the materials used yeah and um yeah he uh we went over there we dropped it off we slept came back the next day and boom dude there's the wolf just in all its glory so it's pretty sweet <laughs> dude uh yeah i i had seen you around before hyperdrive mm-hmm and then seeing, like, I didn't know who was going to be on Hyperdrive. But, right, like, everybody right. would just, I don't know. You'd, like, <laughs> I'd be at, like, a birthday party of, like, non-car people. to be like, you drift. Like, did you see Hyperdrive? I'm oh. like, yeah, yeah. I was like, I know a couple of those guys, oh, you know. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I got to, like, have my moment. Right, And right. the sun just being, like, related to anything. Because <laughs> that, was, that was, like, a big show. It like, was massive because it was kind of like, you know, like, here's these grassroots people. Like, this, you know, the people were kind of up and coming in the stuff. And Instagram was still like popping and new and everything. Yeah. And it was like small enough, but still like wild enough to where you could do your own thing and still get noticed. Like now I feel like there's, if you're not like bringing drama or using a trending like music or something, like yeah. you're probably not going to get your stuff seen. Yeah. And everything's like so watered down, Yeah, you know, um, which I have like my thoughts about if you want to hear them. I do actually. <laughs> well, it's kind of, you know, some people not, might not like it, but dude, when I was growing up, like in high school, and I love and hate this. Like, I do like it, but then sometimes I always want to, like, punch myself because I'm like, dude, you're being a dick. But do you remember how, like, everyone had, like, a group? Yeah. You know, like, the yeah. skaters hung out with the skaters. Yeah. And the bikers hung out with the BMX dudes. And, like, the, you know, the jocks were jocks. And then, like, you know, mathletes, mathletes, and academics. And everyone had, like, their little cliques. And then you'd have, like, the stragglers here and there. they you know, hang out with this person, that person. It was fine. But then you had, like, the bully. Yeah. You know, the bully would always like kind of like police the schoolyard. Yeah. You know, something gets out of line, the bully's gonna come and punk you and put you back in your in your spot, right? But like now, because like the culture is like so I don't want to say watered down, but it's like very watered down to where everything is cool. Hmm. But with that comes like a lack of identity and a lack of like choices for a kid to be like, oh, I want to do that and be that. And like then they're like, oh mom, I want to put these pair of because I remember Telling my mom, mom, I got to get these corduroys. These are sweet. Yeah. So I saw like my, my buddy's like a pro BMXer. And, well, he was my buddy. He was just like a yeah. guy that I saw out there. Yeah. He's probably like, I don't even know where the guy is now. But <laughs> I thought he was the coolest dude ever. And he had these corduroys. I was like, I got to look like that if I'm going to be riding the bikes because I got to be cool. So that was like one of those ideologies things where it like made me want to be this type of person. And nowadays, because everything is cool, there's no identity in it. And because it's at your fingertips, you can just do it right away or have access to it. So then you're like exposed to it all the time. And now it's just like, oh, well, if everything's cool, like I have no like draw towards any bit of it. Interesting. You know, like a lack of uh, self, uh, what's it called when you don't know who you are? Like Zoolander? (laughs) Who am I? (laughs) Identity. (laughs) Like a lack of identity, a lack of uh, uh, specialization, like. For you to shine, like yeah. I knew that. Do you think it's because everything's? You're saying because everything's so accessible, it's easy to just be a part of so many things instead of like part of one thing and like really. I think so. Part of that? Yeah, that and like maybe a couple other contributing factors that you know I don't really know what they are. I just know that 
you know, there seemed to be much more diversification in groups back then. Um, you know, like even like the cars, like everyone that I knew was into these domestic cars, was into, you know, drag cars and everything. And then I see this drift car and this was like unsolicited. I just saw yeah. like a drift car and I was like, like I couldn't blink. You know, yeah. I remember the first <laughs> YouTube video. I wish I could find the, like the actual clip. Yeah. White S13 coming around a bank is like a pretty tight, whatever. He's probably in third gear. <sighs> Comes around the corner, strobes, slow mo. Mm. I was like, yeah. Oh, and even now I'm getting like chills. Cause I was like, that's the that's coolest thing I've ever seen. Exactly. Yeah. And I was like, I got to do that, you know? And then, you know, fast forward six, seven, eight years later. And, um, you know, I've got like an Integra and, you know, you just keep kind of progressing and then you fall into the right people and end up at the track. <laughs> yeah. Well. Damn. Yeah. yeah. Let's go back to like the early days. Oh, that oh. was kind of like a. Precursor? A little, yeah. That was a little intro. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. But like how did it all start, man? Dude, I think it started. Uh, I always told people I was like a mechanic first, right? I loved building shows. things. Yeah. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if that's a compliment, but it is. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I love like piecing something together, but then making it like the ultimate, not just like to like the way that it looks, but like function wise, you know, like how are you going to uh, service this thing and, you know, the hardware that you use and like, is it right or is it wrong? You know, could it be like fixed very easily or, um, you know, just everything about it to make it like efficient. And uh, early on, my mom, she just remembers every time we go to Toys R Us, I'd go ask for like Legos. And she'd be like, oh, well, how about this and that? And I always wanted Legos. And like in my mind, I was like, okay, if I can't get like a lot of things, if I just keep buying these Legos, then I can make whatever I want, you know? Because then like, you know, you piece them together and maybe I'll get like this small little airplane, but then I have like this car over here. But now I can make like this larger airplane with like wheels and stuff. And it would do yeah, like, these yeah, all, yeah, yeah. So yeah. it was like building things. And yeah, I just like build these like little airplane city things with like the landing and uh, yeah, piecing together things. I guess my imagination was kind of going. So that was a way to fix that. And then uh, I love being outside and, uh, you know, it was like always outside, uh, whether it was, uh, riding like a little go ped that uh, like the neighbor let me borrow because my mom could never buy me one, <laughs> or um, you know I want I wanted a go ped so dude, bad. They were awesome, man. Was it? Yeah, and there I was like a little gang of <sighs> go ped kids at my school, and I wanted one <laughs> so bad. Yeah, it was like yes, yeah, so it's like stuff like that, yeah. like that gang. I wish I got to learn about engines that early. Yeah, you yeah, know? yeah. But see, they left a lasting impression on you. Yeah, because they it's so different. It's like yeah. all those dudes, and you're like. Yeah. Your favorite day, the thing that you could imagine would be make you the most happy would probably be riding a go-ped around your town. With your boys. That's it. Yeah. yeah. How simple and yeah. dope. Yeah. Because like, it's like, dude, that was like the that was like the motorcycle gang of middle right. school, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Bad boys. Yeah. You know, still like. Making noise. Yeah. Outlaws. Yeah. <laughs> breaking the law, but yeah. not really. Yeah. Um, that's like missing nowadays, you know? It's like. Yeah. I feel <sighs> like if you didn't like go-peds and you do have a rotary. Oh, you know, it's like yeah. the same concept. Right, like, right, right. Ding, 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 ding. Yeah. yeah. Like fast rev, yeah. super loud. So good. Yeah. Those are great. I, um, with, uh, uh, well, I guess like the whole building thing kind of led to like BMX. Uh, my sister had like a little 50 motorcycle and she let me borrow it and then just ended up giving it to me. Dude, I rode that thing everywhere, <laughs> like everywhere until I think I went to like, maybe like a relative's house over the weekend. Uh, like my relatives didn't see me and I came back and it was gone. And I was like, Hey guys, where's, you know, where's, where'd you guys put my motorcycle? And they were like, what, what do you mean? It's in the garage. And I was like, it's not no. there. Yeah. And they must've left the garage open. Like no. someone, but I had like all these brothers and sisters. It's yeah. like impossible to pinpoint who did it Yeah, type of thing. Yeah. And I was never getting it back. So that was the end of my motorcycle days. But yeah, yeah, it's probably a blessing in disguise because that could have got me into some issues, you know. Yeah, yeah, the bike stuff is the bike stuff's a lot injury prone. Yeah, you know, can <laughs> jack you up. Yeah, um, but that led to like BMX. Um, started selling candy at school in like seventh and eighth grade. This is like a common. This is there's like Dude, a, there's a hustler gene in the, there in is. the drift community. It, there's no other way to do it. Yeah, you know, because like you see what you want, you can't afford it, but yeah. how can you get there? Yeah, and like if you don't start. You're never going to get like a car. No. But that just turns into like 
more and more hustle and more ways to find like finance like a part yeah. or you know like how to get here or you know and um uh, yeah i started selling candy and i ended up getting my first bmx bike it was a haro ci Sick. You know, with the purple anodized crank Sick. and the rims and um dude i'll never forget though like i had that bike and i was like cleaning it one day and like all the kids came by uh like you know they're a little bit older and one of them made fun of me that the crank was like anodized purple yeah and i was like I thought it was like the coolest thing, you know, yeah. the coolest like bike. And then for like an old kid to come and just like shit on it. I was like, no, this is the worst. So I went into the garage and I was like, okay, I can like get this purple off of it, you know? And then the only be like little purple, uh, like things on the spokes and my cranks, you know, yeah, but yeah. The, the main sprocket would be all silver. Yeah. And I was like, okay, that's, they you know, then they won't like, no type yeah, of thing. Yeah. And then, uh, dude, go figure right? Like It's like, what do you call that? Peer pressure or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like yeah. affecting me. Yeah. And um, fast forward to today and everything's still purple. <laughs> but um, uh, so I go in the garage. I'm not going to let anybody tell you, oh, tell yeah, you what to like, do this stuff. I don't care. Yeah. Like, Why is your car purple or pink? Yeah. I'm like. Because it's sick. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, so the, anyway, so I go in the garage and I get like the scotch bright and I start hitting it. And it's like, man, it's taking forever, right? Take forever. Uh, end up, uh you know, getting like this, um, what's that green stuff called that you comet? Oh, comet. Yeah. Okay. I was like, oh, dude, comet will do it. So I start doing it. It's going faster. I'm like, sweet. I'm like, dude, this is still taking forever. And mm. I'm looking and I'm like, oh, my mom cleans everything with bleach. And she says, don't put oh, anything no. on bleach. Bro, I think I was probably this close to like going to the hospital. So <sighs> I poured it in like this, like this plastic container. Yeah. And it was uh, like, that and then I was like, oh, I'll put the Drano in it too. No, so, yeah, Drano. <laughs> back when Drano was like the crystals, it was probably like yeah. I don't know what was in it, but yeah, it's still not good. Yeah. So, Drano crystals, the bleach starts, you know, beaming. I pour the other the stuff in there. I'm like sitting there. I'm like, oh, and it's like foaming. And then I'm like, all right, this is gonna work, you know. And I take it and I pour it onto the sprocket and I get a whiff of it. Yeah, just can't breathe. Oh, I was just like, uh, uh, and I'd never felt anything like that to this day but uh i dropped it like in the street on the asphalt they just newly paved it and like i was like oh my god my mom's gonna kill me you know and like i run back into the garage you know and i was like holding my breath the whole time and i opened it up all the way because it was just like you know the crack oh. and then um yeah that, it left a, a little mark in the in the asphalt yeah it, like <laughs> ate the asphalt. yeah it ate it and it only got like the sprocket like maybe like 75 percent of what like oh, landed so on still it. splotchy. Yeah, yeah. And it's still <laughs> splotchy and everything. I was like, oh dude, all that and I still failed. Um <laughs> yeah, that's a little side story. Dude, so, I don't know. I think I've yeah. Recovered. Yeah. So I mean it, yeah. m m maybe it did something. Being cool to the older kids when you're younger is really <sighs> those punks, man. Yeah. And then you're like, why did I care? Yeah. Sometimes I think, okay, you know, that was a bad situation, but Maybe it like kind of made me aware, like don't fuck with those chemicals ever. Yeah. Like don't mix stuff, anything. And I was yeah. probably maybe 14, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, So it was a good age to like, and kids, they do stupid shit, especially little boys, they dumb, like just the dumbest shit. So I think the yep. <laughs> most that you can encounter without killing yourself is probably going to make you a little more street smart, you know? Yeah. If you can get out of there alive without like, you know, extreme damage. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I think I might have some brain damage from being a crazy youngster, but yeah, yeah. There's a lot of stuff. Even when you get older, you like let things go, and then other things happen, and you know, you're like, oh, no. Well, I got another story. Yeah. Dude, I've got a million. Let's stories, hear it, dude. Okay, well, I was at Grange, and uh, what day was it, dude? It might have even been the day that they just opened up, like Apple Valley that yeah. day. Yeah, when they right? repaid it. Yeah, and at the end of the day. Uh, I was just going to do like a burnout before I left, like waste the tires. And like, they're already taking pictures of other people over there. And before that, I was like, Hey, you know, what? I should probably fix my door. Cause my latch broke, you know, mm. um, which did you get hit that day? Was it that day or was it? No, that day when I got hit hard, that yeah. was, I think before or after that, that one, the car was still functional and it was like a good day. Yeah. Yeah, because I, I, when I got hit that hard, I remember just packing up and, like, going, like, okay, I got, like, a competition coming up. I got to get the fucking car going. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, that so, was the first day we drove together was the ABS grand opening. Was it? Yeah. Okay. 
Well, that day was, uh, that was a good day. Yeah, it was fun. I had a good time. Asphy- asphyxiated myself. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't open the door from the inside. Um, so I like jerry rigged like this like wire. It was like way too thin. And it like if you hit it, it would open. But my normal latch system was like busted. Yeah. Uh, that side didn't open either. So at the end of the day, I'm doing it. I'm like, oh, all right, let me get this freaking burnout going. First, bah, get into second, bah, just plume it up third. Bah, and it's just, the car's floating, right? Yeah. It's like, boom, it is filling the cabin. Yeah. Like bad, because yeah. it wasn't that sealed. And then, you know, I you know, get out of it, you know, our car's coming, run, 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 and still running, running, running. Can't see shit, just smoke <laughs> everywhere. I'm like, all right, dude, this is getting a little much, you know, go to open up the door, <laughs> breaks. Breaks. No. I'm like, oh. I have yeah, Lexan windows with the little screen that you push forward. Yeah. So I'd have to like, you know, get out of it. So boom, I try to get out and I can't reach it all the way. Like I've never had to do that. So I yeah. didn't know. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, I'm gonna die in here. Because like I breathe and it was well, actually, I guess that goes back to my word. That felt like the same the same mustard yeah. gas shit that yeah. I just <laughs> inhaled. Um, that was really bad. And I was like, this is utterly stupid. Why didn't I just fix this? This is And then for me to do the burnout, knowing it's going to fill the cabin, idiot. You know, kids never really grow up, I guess. Boys will be boys. Uh, I saw a track worker and I flagged him down. I was like, you know, trying to tell him the car is still loud. You know, turn the car off. Everyone's still doing burnouts and stuff. And he opens up the door and he's like, and I'm just like, dude, he has no clue. Yeah, no idea what I was asking for. I probably could have died. I don't know if I would have died, but it felt like I was going to die. And um, yeah, so uh, that's the side story. Sick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, make sure your door's open before you do third oh, gear burnouts. Dude, That's yeah. the lesson. If you got like Lexan windows, just make sure that you got a good mechanism to get out because, yeah. I mean, I tried everything too. You know, I was like, yeah. let me put this up. You know, I yeah. pulled like my shirt and it was yeah. just so much smoke in the car. It didn't yeah. matter. Yeah. So I feel like you're a technical dude too. Like you probably yeah. are like, I'm going to try this. Like, how, how do I get out of this? Right, right. I feel, I could see you getting out of an escape room, you know? Yeah, maybe, <laughs> maybe just make it if I got lucky, but I definitely got lucky that one. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, um, yeah, but boys are kind of dumb and we do things that, uh, put us in dangerous situations, whether we like it or not. Yeah. Oh, well, I think that's part of it. Yeah. Part of the thrill, right? Yeah, I don't think we'd drift if we weren't like that. No, no, yeah. it's definitely a draw. Yeah, so hustler, BMX, BMX, then led to uh, just continued to build stuff. Uh, BMX turned into like me thinking I was gonna be like a pro BMXer. Sick. Um, you know, I was like in like three bikes at that point. You know, one of them had gotten stolen. Uh, and I was 18, and my very first car was a four-door automatic Civic LX. And I remember thinking, like, dude, you can't be mad because you're getting a car, yeah. right? Like, your mom, she put all this together. But when I just remember feeling so disappointed, dude, because all I wanted was a manual. I didn't care what it was. Yeah. I just wanted a you manual. Want get, yeah. You know, that yeah. was, you know, yeah. first car. And it was when Civics were everything. Everyone had like a cool Civic, you know, and my mom sat me down. She's like, oh, you know, if you could pick a car, what would it be? And I was like, oh, well, you know, she's like, well, what color? And I was like, oh, I, you know, I don't really care. I just don't like green. You know, yeah. I'm not like a green person. Yeah, yeah. And she's like, okay. And I was like, and it's got to be like a five speed. That would, that would be like the best I could answer, like ask for. She's like, well, what else? And I was like, that's it. You know, like, yeah. I think I'll be happy with anything, you know? Yeah. And um, you know, here's a kid like complaining about a first world problem, right? Getting yeah. my first car. Uh, but I got a four door, yeah, four door manual or four door automatic green civic. And I was just like, <laughs> dude, oh, and I, it was so terrible because I, I, I look outside. <laughs> like, those are the two things I didn't know. Yeah. Yeah. The two things I, I really <laughs> just. a good deal though. No, I, I mean, you get a car, man. Yeah. But it's yeah. just, you know, I looked out the window and then. They were trying to surprise me with it, and I saw it pull up, and I was just – I remember thinking, like, please don't let that be my car. Yeah. Oh, I knew it was because yeah. they just pulled up in it. Yeah. And then they're like, oh, Aaron, come out. Though. And I came out, and, dude, I was a good kid. Like, no one ever had to, like, look after me. Or, yeah. You know, well, they had to look after me, but, like, <laughs> you know, th- yeah. I never got into, like, big trouble. I just yeah. kind of was out in the field building dirt jumps all the time mm. and, like, playing right there on the block. To, and uh, 
I remember going out there and, you know, I said thank you and everything, but I remember being so, like my heart was in my, uh, ugh, it was so bad, dude. But again, can't complain about stuff like that. Cause it, if I wouldn't have had that hunger to get something else, yeah, mm. you know, maybe uh, I'd still be driving, uh, driving the, the four door LX. Yeah. To this day. <laughs> yeah. But uh, uh, first week I'm driving the car, my buddies uh, to, to school. I was like the older out of all my friends, so I was driving first. Yeah. And uh, so immediately go, cool doesn't even matter. Oh, yeah, it's yeah. manual. Bad. Yeah. Oh, dude, you got to, you know, Taco Bell, Del yeah. Taco. <laughs> doesn't matter. You know, all times. <laughs> That's so relatable. It was great. And then, my, again, like my mom didn't really ask questions where I was going because she knew I was with my other two friends and they were always like good, like good dudes. Um, so I'm going to make a right hand turn and all of a sudden, dude, the steering wheel just starts, keeps going <laughs> like brakes. Right. Slam on, you know, st step on the brake. And uh, this car that was making a left, like coming into me, but I was like going at it, you know, like kind of stopped, skidded, went around. And then also and it caught again. And still to this day, I don't know how that could happen. Yeah. But it happened. And, uh, you know, I told Whoa. my mom about it. And uh, my sister worked at the Honda dealership. So they got that car super cheap. And I guess it had been an accident. Yeah. And uh, she ended up. Uh, give or they ended up taking the car back and she's like you know what i'm gonna get a new car and my sister she was like the shit at the time she like worked at honda was always buying like a brand new car and everything so she was like you know what here you can just have my car if mom agrees to take, make the payments and i'll buy a new car and uh dude my mom did it dude she paid like at the time it was 2001 civic ex manual vtech blue coupe and I was like, no. Yeah. I was like, dude, now. Now you know, you're the king. Now I'm the king. Because, yeah. I mean, still front wheel drive and everything. Yeah. But at the time, there was nothing cooler than that. You know? Oh, I, yeah. It's like, the bo that body style is still <laughs> yeah, one of the best pretty sweet. body styles. Pretty sweet. And yeah. then, you know, I like went online. I'm like looking on the forums and everything. AIM. You know, remember AIM? Yep, like yep. asking people, oh, dude. Yeah, dude, you got to take off the stock airbox. It's like an intake mod and all this stuff. So I took the, <laughs> the airbox off and it's still like a. It still had the filter, but yeah. it's like the pre-intake. Yeah, yeah, So it's yeah. not even an intake. It's just like removing some plastic. <laughs> but it made this sweet pop noise when he stepped on it. It's like, boom. And it was like, made it so much louder. Yeah. And I remember my sister's like, what did you do? What did you do? And I was like, oh, nothing, nothing. And she's like, what? It's so loud. And like, probably added like two horsepower. Yeah. But it was still All the All intake thing. noise. Intake yeah. noise is sick. It's great. It's like, yeah. a, you know, it's, it's got like the, you know, just that little charge and then, you know, resonates so well. But um. I flipped that car in the canyon. No way. Yeah, Bokeh Canyon. Uh, I had it for a long time. Um, I didn't do much to it other than that. I think I just like bought good tires. Mm -hmm. And um, I was commuting back and forth to a coffee shop on the other side of Bokeh Canyon in Valencia. So um, every morning, it was like 5 a.m. to 2 was like my shift. Yeah, uh, so there's nobody on the road. Yeah, and dude, that's kind of where I learned. I always attribute it to like that's where I learned like flow and yeah. like – going faster and faster because there's yeah. always dudes in there just like really going fast and I'd always try to keep up with them and then you know fast forward two years and I'm like so confident yeah. like going in there and uh I actually crashed coming back from Valencia on a long left-hand turn and the car got a like ahead of me and I still swear to this day that I got a flat tire because when I pitched the car in you know uh, it's very predictable with like front wheel. Once you get used to it, you just kind of like, and it pulls you yeah. and you kind of like rotate on the front end, kind of like an initiation. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And then it just kept going. And then I overcorrected without counter steering and it just oh. came back this way and then whoop, right off the road. And oh, then, shit. yeah, right off the road and I'm looking and I look forward and there's like one of those telephone poles with the support wires coming down. And I, I was heading straight for it. And I'm just thinking, it's going to cut me in half. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so yeah. Like, and you're like watching it happen. Yeah. Yeah. So your mind just goes there. Yeah. And I just remember seeing it. It's all punk, and it just flipped the car and I was like, oh, boom, onto its side. And I stopped and I was like, oh shit. And I was like, dude, no one's going to believe me. Like what happened? Yeah. I was like, all right, well, let me get out. So like, you know, I find my, I think it was like a Nokia, like yeah. whatever. Brick phone. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Open up the door, jump out. And I remember uh, when I got out of the car, the door like hit like my either my pinky or my thumb and i was like oh fuck and i was like damn it yeah. and i was like shaking my hand and this lady runs up and she's like are you okay and i'm like yeah yeah i hurt my thumb and i'm thinking to myself 
Dude, you just fucking hurt your thumb. Roll the car. Yeah, getting out of the, <laughs> getting out of the, because the door fell on it, you know, and you're like, go figure. That's yeah. like a boy though, right? Yeah, like, yeah. oh, dang it, hurt myself. And then yeah. I was looking at the car. I was like, oh, man. And the lady ended up being my buddy's mom. And she's like, do I need to call your mom? I was like, no, I already, I already talked to her. And I was like, yeah, there's you're like, no I need way. a minute. Yeah. yeah, I need a minute before this goes down. <laughs> She's like, are you sure? And I was like, yeah, I, I just got off the phone with her, you know, but she totally knew I was lying. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, yeah, that car got totaled. And then uh, I think I got like three grand for it or something, which went to my sister because, or my mom, because, you know, the car needed to be paid off. Yeah. And then I was kind of stuck, but I was working. So I ended up buying a. Is this like is this in high school or after? This high school? was after high school. So uh, through high school, what did I do in high school? I continued to ride BMX, uh, and I played soccer. And I actually thought I was going to be like pro soccer player. So you know? so like uh, I love soccer. I'm dude. noticing a trend here. <laughs> All in on yeah. certain things. Yeah. And um, dude, the, my team was pretty good though. Like we went, uh, we won CIF undefeated. Uh, my junior year and like most of those guys went off to college to play like you know d ones and uh no way yeah it did real well and i remember uh my coach coming up and say hey aaron you know um we've got these lists of colleges if you just bring me the list you know i'll sign you up for them and we'll th- make sure the applications go out and i know like the coaches at all these you know um and i got super lucky with that team because that team like coached itself. There was so much talent on that team. And I didn't start at first, but come junior year, I started like getting more and more playing time. Mm-hmm. And then I was like five, four up until like junior year. No and, way. Dude, I was so small. I was like, you can see if like the varsity picture, I'm like the smallest dude in the front line. All the pl- other players are all tall. So I look like a orangutan holding on them. <laughs> and um, uh, then I started growing like probably at the end of my junior year. And uh, that's when I started getting more noticed. And then I remember going home and I was like, hey, mom, uh, my coach said all this about, you know, college and this and that and the soccer team. And she's like, oh, cool. All right. Well, what are you going to do? And I was like, uh, I guess like fill out the applications. And then, like, I think I went to my room and then my buddy Joseph came over with his BMX. And I was like, yeah, I'm going to go right. Yeah. <laughs> so you just like let those opportunities go. Mm-hmm. But um, again, I, you know, those opportunities happen and. I wouldn't change anything now. Yeah. Uh, later on, I ended up uh, playing like uh, semi-pro for like two years in uh, it was a PDL, so Premier Development League. No way. Uh, for, yeah, Lancaster Rattlers, which was still like one of those, uh, I don't know what you call those, uh, like a, it's like a rhythm. Like when you're into your car and you're doing it all the time and it's just like you live and sleep, breathe, eat, this one thing, it's like this weird rhythm that you get into that you just go all into and it's like all encompassing and you can like obsess about it and just do it. And I never would like burn myself out about those passionate things. That's pretty, that's a, that's a good trait. (laughs) You know, it's great for the things that you love. Yeah. If you can do them your way a hundred percent, you know, once like there starts to get like, uh, you know, other, other input where it's like not yours anymore or someone sprinkles like some like salty shit on it. You know, like, <laughs> yeah, this yeah. doesn't taste as sweet anymore. Yeah. You know? um, then things change, which is actually what happened. They fired the coach who'd brought me on, you know, uh, his players replaced us, including his sons. You know, he had like three of his sons on the team and uh, all three of them were in the positions that I would have rotated to. Uh-huh. And I was like, dude, this is bullshit. So I ended up quitting, which is, it's good, but at the time I was like, dude, you've never quit anything Whoa. and you're not doing this. Yeah. You know, but I ended up. Well, doing I mean, it. that says something. Yeah, it is. And it, it was okay. But um, it was also, uh, yeah, I played like in a band. You really? Know? Dude, I played, yeah, in a metalcore band called uh, The Adversary. No way. Yeah, dude. Like, drum music like on Spotify? Uh, yeah, I think it's on SoundCloud. Okay. It's on okay, SoundCloud. Okay. I'll try to shoot you the link. Yeah, dude. yeah. Uh, the Adversary Music, uh, metalcore, which is, uh, you know, Animals as Leaders? Uh, Tosin Abasi, kind of black dude with the dreadlocks, crazy guitarist, nine string, eight yeah, string. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, he, uh, we actually played with them twice. And then about maybe is it two years now or a year ago, uh, we bumped into each other, uh, just online. And I messaged on like comments on one of his things. And then he DM me, he's like, dude, 
what's up? And I was like, and he like totally up? remembered you. Yeah, he yeah. got like World Guitarist of the Year or something, dude. He's yeah. like really good. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, world renowned guitarist. And he's like, dude, that's so sweet. You're into cars. And I'm like, yeah, you kept going and now you're badass, you know? And uh, he's like, oh, dude, I'd love to come out and like drive with you. And I'm like, well, I'm going to go to the track next week if you want to roll. No. Yeah, so he came out. No. But he's like driving this McLaren. No. Uh, P- what do you call that? The P5? P- I don't know. P1 fast, something. Yeah. Fastest yeah. production car I've ever been in. Yeah. Like when he was, I, he took me in a ride. Yeah. Well, first, this is what he says. He's like, oh. Dude, I want you to like teach me how to drift in it. And I'm like, yeah, like, I'm not gonna do that in this car. <laughs> yeah, and he's like, yeah. well, I need to know like the limits of it so yeah. that I can, you know, be prepared. Yeah. And I was like, look, dude, even if something happened, if I was in the driver's seat in that car going fast enough, you're probably not gonna do anything. Like it's yeah. you're still gonna eat shit. You yeah. know, if you put yourself in trouble. Yeah. Well, yeah, you know the limits of it to an extent, but the limits on balcony are going to be different than that's English like a very press. thoughtful way to do it because like most people just be like yeah i'll show you yeah, yeah I'll give me the throw, toss me the key well yeah. i ended up doing it yeah because <laughs> he's like dude please i want you to like just try to drift it and i was like all right dude so i ended up doing like these figure eights and then there's a guy out there how was that was yeah. it uh, i mean it's the like, car it's like not it's probably not as fun as doing no 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 because stuff in you're, a drift car. you're so like aware of the car yeah like what like how nice of a car yeah. this thing is. And then, I mean, the power band was beautiful. It really was. It was, it was great. It's turbo car. Yeah. Um, but, you know, having to paddle shift, not cool. Yeah. Uh, we turned off most of the safety, like driver aid stuff. Uh, but still, like it would do like a weird, like, I don't know if it was ignition cut or something. You know, oh, in interesting. full power. Yeah. Um, but I did do like few figure eights but they had to be you had to get up in the revs because there's like nothing under like five grand six oh, grand. so you gotta commit yeah and then just which is scary dude. yeah it, i mean yeah. but it's balcony it's a yeah. big pad so you just yeah. stay out of certain spots yeah yeah you'd have been fine yeah yeah <laughs> but very scary still because i was like oh what if it gets hot and he's like no it's good and then um we met like this youtuber guy up there uh i forgot what his name was but he tried it and he couldn't do it at all. And I was just like, you're like, yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah Cause you know, they always try to like tell you, Oh, you know, we drifted this ball. And I'm like, Oh, cool. You know, yeah. but then, well, here you go. Yeah. <laughs> and then, like, they can't do it at all. I was like, well, that's not drifting, but you <laughs> maybe know. it's good. You left the name out. Ah, uh, yeah. I, do, I don't want to, to, yeah. to shit on any names. Yeah, Although don't. his name, no, sorry. <laughs> I'm trying to think of what it was. You don't want their YouTube RB coming out. No, 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 no. Oh, I don't care these days. Anyway. Yeah. It's like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's crazy, but, uh, dude. Yeah, Toast Nabasi. And then he's like, hey, man, I got these tickets if you want to come to the – No. You know? so, yeah, yeah, so now stop. you're just boys. Dude. Yeah, dude. Now it's sweet. Text him. Hey, man, I'll be in, you know, L.A. at this point. You want to go grab lunch? Sure. And uh, he's all, like, extra artsy. You know, he'd be, like, the Lewis Hamilton wearing these giant white Lee pipes yeah, and, like, yeah, you know, yeah. like some <laughs> sweet Jimi Hendrix shoes or something. Yeah. And you show up and it's like – I would feel so awkward wearing that just because I always wear the same thing. <laughs> but he's just like the king, you know, yeah. he doesn't care. And it's yeah. like, man, he's really embraced that artistic type of. Yeah. Did he, he dress like that when you met him before? No, just I think like a black shirt and like, yeah. oh, that's what I told him. I was like, hey, man, just dress like like you're going to be moving shit all day because it's going to be hot as shit out there. Yeah. You know, yeah, the car yeah. smells like gas and all this yeah. stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he did. but That's good. Yeah. But he, when he took me for a ride in it uh, on that stretch of to get to Willow. Honestly, when he accelerated, I've been in some pretty fast cars. This was, uh, I, I like, I always tell people those should not be available to the public. Yeah. You because should, you it was like ridiculous. a special license. Yeah. yeah. The, like, I got like tunnel vision. I was in the passenger seat, just like, what? You know, and it's like 165, 170. And I'm like, dude, please lift right <laughs> yeah. now. And he yeah. like, he yeah, lift. Yeah. I didn't say anything, but yeah. he lifted. And I'm just like, dude, that's kind of dumb. I mean, it's yeah, awesome. That's horrifying. But yeah, but it, it should not be on the roads at yeah, it's all. Like, that's like a, a fighter pilot yeah, should yeah. be able to drive that. Right, right. And yeah. I was getting legit like tunnel vision, you know, to where I was like, if I stay in this, I think I'm going to pass out. Yeah. You know, and I was like trying to think, what well, the fighter pilots, they like squeeze or something <laughs> and they, like force the blood in their head or something. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, what kind of drift car driver is going to yeah. pass out? <laughs> this guy's going to think I'm a wimp or something. <laughs> You know, uh, but uh, yeah, that, that was pretty cool. And then I got to uh, meet up with the guys from Hyperdrive yeah. as well. Sorry, this is another tangent about No, McLaren. do it, do it. And he's like, oh, dude, you got to drift this thing. Same, it was a black one with like these green, fluorescent green uh, accents. And that one was the first time I drifted one. 
uh, and it wasn't real drift. It was just like a figure eight type of thing. Um, but he had, he like worked at Chicago motor cars or exotic Chicago motor cars. He's a guy on hyperdrive, the guy Omar, uh, with the, I don't know if he had a Lambo. No, he had like a, maybe it was a Dodge Viper or, um, what did he have on the show? He was the guy who couldn't drift and hit the cone. So he opened up the door to knock him down. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. that was hilarious because yeah. although they like skipped, they switched to like the scenes of everyone like, oh, boo. Everyone was like dying laughing yeah. because he was like, guys, I can't slide this car. I don't have the skill to do it. I'm just going to open up my door and knock the cones down. Yeah. And, you know, the production was like, don't do that. You're supposed to hit it. And he's like, well, I can't do that, though. Yeah. Like, I don't know how to do it. Yeah. We just practice all day. Yeah. I can't do it. So I'm going to have to knock down the cones somehow to like not get penalized. And so he did that. So everyone's busting up on the ground. And, uh, uh, but yeah, after that show, it was like a year after he, I was driving my car back, uh, from the East coast and I stopped in Chicago, stayed at his place. And then he took me out to dinner and then we went to this parking lot. He's like, Oh, you got to drift this thing. I like, dude, I, re I really don't want to. Like, I can't yeah. afford to fix it. Yeah. You know, I think yeah. I had like 200 bucks in my account. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and he's like millionaire with yeah. these cars yeah. and stuff. And um, he's like, like, I don't want to be indebted to you. I don't yeah, know yeah. what that's going to look like. Yeah. And I was like, dude, if I break it, I'm like going to owe the rest of my life to you. He's like, no, nah, dude, the, the mechanics owe me a favor anyways. I was like, well, all right, man. So I get in it and he like turns everything off. He had it like dialed. And <clears throat> dude, same thing, except for this one worked way better. Yeah. Uh, maybe he had some extra settings turned off, but just did like a little figure eight thing. And then we met up uh, with another guy, Jordan, who had the white like twin turbo Lambo. Uh, and I think he just set a world record like f last month, I think, in that thing. Crazy. Like going six something in this all wheel drive twin turbo. I don't know what the fuck it was. Maybe it was a Lambo or an Audi but it was ridiculously fast. And um, they took me on the freeway and just being like in those cars with them driving. And uh, Jordan, he was like, dude, you got to drive this thing. And so he let me drive it. And I was just like, dude, what the fuck? Because those cars are fast. Like yeah. they're, our cars are quick, yeah. you know, what, but it's for what different. they do. It is so different. Yeah. And, you know, it's just like, I get it. I don't know. I mean, maybe if I had like millions of dollars, I'd spend money on one of them. But um, – yeah, it's just a completely different, like, subculture within ours, yeah. you know, that just yeah. exotic cars. Like exotic car, <laughs> hyper car guys. Right, right. Like, I'm just like, yeah, you guys have fun with yeah, that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. Something break. Oh, so I overheated the McLaren. No. Yeah. I was like, dude, it's going to get hot. It's going to get hot. He's like, no, just keep going. I'm like, dude, there's one thing that I really don't want to do in this car. Like, overheat. Yeah, it's like. Everything else is pretty probably like a fairly bolt-on solution. Very expensive, but bolt-on. This is like you ruin the motor. Yeah. Well, I overheated the, the thing, and it's like, you know, blew all this cooling out. And um, his thing was, okay, well, let's just drive it back. And I'm like, dude, we can't drive back. We got to tow it back. I just blew the coolant, whatever it was. There's probably no coolant in it. You know, it's all over the ground. And he's like, dude, it doesn't matter. And I was just thinking to myself, like, it totally matters. <laughs> you know, like, you're saying it doesn't, but I know that it does. And then uh, he didn't give a fuck about it, bro. And it was so awesome just because, I mean, he told me and he's just a good guy type of thing. Yeah. But ever, like, if you go back and look through, like, all the comments and everything, he's always like, hey, remember when you broke my McLaren? <laughs> and, like, it's, like, kind of funny because he always fucks around with, like, yeah. funny. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, that's Omar. Uh, good guy. Great guy. And um, that's my uh, second McLaren uh, <sighs> story. And probably the – Yeah, well, I did probably two. the last. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you're yeah. like, I'm done. Yeah, no more braking yeah. uh, expensive cars for I'd sure. say like the excitement probably isn't worth the risk on that. No, no. And it, it's not – I mean, it was kind of cool to do the figure eight, to yeah. have like a video of it. But yeah. I'd rather just get in a 350Z and do them because yeah. it's just like yeah. way more predictable, yeah. better <laughs> angle, car feels better. Yeah. Those aren't made to do anything that yeah. we like to do. Yeah. Oh. I'm I'm kind of there too. Yeah. Yeah. Like I just I don't know if someone's like, hey, do rip some donuts in my million dollar car. I'd be like, <laughs> that's okay. all good. I was <laughs> like, I don't know. I'm right. Like, right. I'm like scared to drive other people's drift cars, dude. I am notorious for that too. I go to the track first thing. Hey, man, you want to drive my car? No. Yeah. I don't I feel do like it. I'm gonna get in it. Something's gonna break. I'm gonna feel indebted to you. I'm gonna have to fix your shit. I don't know if your shit is solid. I don't know like. I'm just like more aware 
of the time that I want to have because I've spent so much time in my own cars yeah. and how fun and good that is. Yeah. And it's never that way when you jump in someone else's car who wants you to drive their car. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. like if you went to the track with your car, yeah. you're not going to ask me to drive your car because you're going to be busy driving it the whole time because yeah. it's sorted and you're there for a reason. Yeah. <laughs> Does yeah. that make sense? Yeah. So when someone asks you, Hey dude, drive my car. You're like, is something wrong with it? Yeah. Like you want, <laughs> or like, you know, is it their first time at the track? Maybe. You know, I have, yeah, I have people that like want me to drive their car for like multiple, like sometimes they'll, people will have me drive their car and just like have me tell them what I would change. Gotcha. Like, gotcha. Like, make sure the setup is good. Yeah. And I'm cool with that, but I'm yeah. always like, Hey, like I'm not going to tandem with anybody. Right. Right. Like <laughs> I'm not going to do this. Like, uh, I drove, uh, I drove Jimmy Oaks's mm -hmm. S13 at final bout. Yep. And like, I was like. I don't, I refuse to tandem with anybody. Yeah. And I'm off the line and like, I, I look behind me and, and I see Get the lineup, dude. Yeah. I see, <laughs> I see Josh's car, uh, like his team, his front street teammate. And he's like, Hey, hey like two, two. And yeah, I'm just yeah. like, no, 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 like, no. And then I find out later it was Jimmy trying to tandem with oh, me gotcha, in his gotcha, car. And I was gotcha. like, I wouldn't have cared that. Right. Like, I right. Different done story. It. Yeah. I felt bad, but like, yeah, I just, I can't like, there's something you know how much work goes into so, it. I have, I have you so know? much guilt and any time, any time like something like that happens, like, I don't know. Have you I ever know. hurt anybody's car when you brought um, it? I have luckily no dude. Um, but I would also consider myself like ultra, ultra Careful. cautious yeah. all the time, you know? And I always had like, I always try to tell people from NorCal that Southern California people have like a different upbringing in drifting. Like you guys have way more camaraderie, way more people to drive with um, than when I was doing it. I had like a group that should like kind of opened the door for me. Yeah. And then they were all too old and stopped drifting. Interesting. And so for me, it was like, okay, well, how do I keep doing this? So but, I would like. Yeah, keep going. Yeah, I'd keep yeah. going to like events and driving, but it was always driving by myself. Yeah. And like figuring it out. And then, you know, it's like this visual thing. It's like, okay, well. My car, I don't feel like I'm doing that in the videos. They're doing this. How do I make my car look like that? Mm -hmm. You know, and like, oh, like how car. do you make it move like that? Yeah. And like yeah. sound like that because right. like, you know, when you get into the car and you go to the track and you're like, oh, dude, that was a sweet entry and blah, blah, blah. And, and you, you look at it and it's like, video, you're like that dude, sucks. so lame, <laughs> yeah. so lame. And even sometimes today, you know, like you know, I'll look back. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, dude, delete that video. I don't want to remember that, <laughs> you know, but <laughs> I get it. Yeah. yeah. And then you ride in someone else's car and like, you're like, oh shit, you know, th this is how you do it. Or, you know, if their car is off limiter and I'm not, I need to be on limiter. Okay. You're on limiter in second. Oh, that's way too slow. Yeah. That means I got to be on limiter on third. Yeah. You know, and then you like start to put it together and then, you know, the line and then um, you're just working on other people's teams and like seeing like drifting at a se like separate level kind of made me like, okay, I need to be trying to make my car look like that when I'm driving it versus, you know, and no offense, like everyone at the track, like if it was like a fun event, cool. But I was always had like this overwhelming, like want to build and drive like the best thing that I could build and drive and be that like the pilot of that thing yeah. at like the highest level that I could take it to, you know? And like, I think that that was what made me kind of push into competition and like really uh obsess about it to where it was like 12 13 hours a day you know all the time you know being on i get that yeah it's like this like routine like i was saying like those routines stuff like that because i'm like dude it's so positive if you make something positive out of it because you're engulfing yourself in something that you are really into and you want that knowledge for yourself but then once you get the knowledge what do you do with it yeah well you can apply it but if you apply it wrong, you're getting, it, you're getting it wrong. If you apply it right, it's like ultra rewarding, Yeah. you know? And like your car is faster. You can stay at angle and you can drive it at any angle, you know, like once you like get the car right and, uh, you know, it doesn't matter what the guy in front of you is doing, you're, you're still safe at all angles. You know, the car is drivable now, all angles, good. It doesn't matter where he initiates, you initiate before him, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, if you can't do that, you initiate after, but you get into him to where no matter what, you can still like, move yeah. and put yourself yeah. in a good position yeah. Yeah. and it's like once you work on like those things and they start working for yourself it kind of uh just opens a door you know and you like feel like 
it's like one of the best feelings, you know, knowing that you can like control this thing. Car's working, bitching. There's no problems with the car. Uh, if there's anything wrong with it, you can fix it. If something, if there's a mishap or whatever. And uh, yeah, I love it. <laughs> but uh, a little bit out of order. Yeah. 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 Like how did you, okay, so tell me about these people that you got into drifting with. You yeah. saw the you saw the video of the white S13. Yes, yes. Strobes, and that was like. And that was like my ideal, like my car needs to replicate that feeling when I'm looking at it and when I'm driving it. Yeah. You know, so um, when I was a kid, my sister took me uh, down below. I don't know what the fuck we were doing, but we were in Santa Monica making a left-hand turn, and I see this car at the light. It's a black car. And I was like, what the fuck is that? Yeah. And it makes this left-hand turn in front of me. Wah, loud, dude. Wah. And I remember the badge on it, RX-7, third gen. You know, moonroof up, slammed on the ground. I was probably 15, 16, yeah. and I was just like, that's look at that. It. Look at yeah. that. Th that's like the coolest thing I've ever seen. Yeah. And then I kept on telling myself, oh, dude, that's RX-7. Like, you know, like, do you guys sell those at your dealership? She's like, no. And I work at Honda. And like, <laughs> you know, it's so dumb when you're a kid. You're just like <laughs> thinking, you know. I get it. And um, yeah. yeah, so I loved, I that was like the all-end car. And uh, fast forward, I bought the street bike. Did I tell you about the street bike? Mm -mm. Okay, so I wrecked the blue Honda. Yep. My first car, I wrecked that car. I ended up, uh, working at the coffee shop, I bought uh, a, uh, a street bike, which ended up I had for two years, and I put twenty three thousand miles on. No, I was commuting through that same canyon. Oh my stupid God. kid, dude! I was ripping through. <laughs> yeah, that you were moving. so fast. I'd go to Rider's Choice, and I'd steal the used takeoff like race tires. Because they just threw them back there. Yeah. You know, you just had to be careful and warm them up well. Yeah. <laughs> but I would change them in the parking lot <laughs> at night, dude. Some kid, like, back there. I'd, like, get over there. You know, I'm like, oh, I'm taking these race takeoffs, putting them on my bike, and, like, just riding to work every day. And I came in contact with, like, this other crew who was, like, jamming through there. And uh, they were ripping. And one guy was like, hey, dude, like, when you turn in, you got to wait till like, the last second. And then just make the turn, like, ultra fast. You know, like, don't, like, slowly get into it. You're being too hesitant. You got to, like, fall into it, but, like, at the last second that you have to turn. That way you can carry more speed through there. So, you like, he, like, basically explained it to me. Like, you when, you when you turn in, you want there to be a sharp interruption, but then have the fastest straight line through that corner as you can, which is kind of like the racing line, right? Yeah, yeah, but I yeah. always, I kept following him. And I for probably three or four trips, I was falling behind. Yeah. And then I started keeping up and then getting better and better to where I was just riding with them all the time. And uh, I saw a couple people almost like really probably yeah. end their lives. Yeah. One dude like went on oncoming traffic. I was going into this corner, up and over this thing. It was like the backside of uh, uh, Spunky Canyon goes over and it goes towards like Green Valley or something like that. And there was this corner. It goes up and over to the right. And I remember coming into it and I was like, dude, we're going kind of fast. You know, and so like I'm, I'm like lifting off the throttle and my buddy, he's going faster, but I'm seeing him like get closer to the line. And I'm like, dude, how is he doing this? Yeah. But then like, I was like, well, he's not because he's fucking going over the line, yeah. goes yeah. over the yeah. line. Uh, right. And then I'm just thinking, oh, this is it. He's fucking dead. Yeah. There's no cars, but he goes over the line into the dirt. A car comes by whoosh right past him, goes on this dirt embankment, jumps off this rock back onto the road. And then he looks at me and I look at him. And I'm like, and he's just like, and he keeps going. And that's like, <laughs> that was just what stupid boys do. Yeah. And I'm like, oh my God. But then, uh, yeah, the rest of the ride went fine. But a bunch of shit when you, yeah, when I was talking about kids dying, boys do stupid things. Yeah. That was one of the moments. Yeah. But uh, I think it was a couple months down the line, I ended up getting a reckless driving ticket on that bike. Uh, I did a wheelie past a biker cop. I was doing 84 and a 35 in a wheelie. Like nose up, yeah. It just, you know, there's this guy next to me and he's riding this like Kawasaki and I was like on a CBR and it's like this whole like rivalry. Yeah. And he took off and I was like, dude, I'm going to pass this yeah. guy in a yeah. wheelie. It's always that. Yeah, I was it's like, well, you know, go past him and I'm like, sucker. And I'm just yeah. holding, 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 let it down. Boom. And I'm like, oh shit, my gas light's on. It's like blinking. And I'm like, ah, oh, it's all good. And I see this car or this little tiny like bike pull out way back there and i'm like 
that's got to be a cop. Yeah. And I was like, ah, well, I'll just pull over when he gets there. Yeah. And then uh, he pulled me over for sure, but it wasn't very nice. He like, he got me, dude, like that. He pulled me. Oh, so I, you know, I got off my bike, hands up and everything. And uh, he's like, hey, get on the ground. And I, I'm tank top with my backpack. On. I was going to, to school. Yeah. Right? And uh, what was I, 20, 22, 23? Yeah. You know? And I was just like, ah, oh, it's hot. It's hot on the ground. And he's just like, get on the fucking ground. And I'm like, dude, uh, you know, and I'm just thinking like, this is a bad situation. Yeah. And I got my yeah. helmet on. Yeah. I don't know if he can hear me or not, but like, I'm trying to tell him like, you know, and then all of a sudden he turns me around by my helmet. Like he grabs my helmet and like pulls me around. I think he realized at that point I was a kid, yeah. you know, but, uh, you know, sat me on the ground. It's fucking burning, opens up the cop car, puts me in the back of the cop car, turns on the fucking heat. And I was in the back of that cop car for like 45, 50 minutes. Tow truck comes, puts my bike up there. They search my bag. They don't find nothing. Yeah. And I'm in the back fucking drenched, bro. Just like, oh, my God. Like, what's going to happen? Yeah. You know, I don't know what the fuck's going to happen. Uh, and uh, he lets me out. He's yeah, like, the, All right. the LAPD sauna. <sighs> Dude, it was pretty. Oh, it was, it was sheriff's. Oh. Like, yeah, yeah. But, I mean, just a. Well, I'm not going to make yeah. any political it, statements. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, Sheriff, LAPD, same, same, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Law enforcement. Um, oh, my God, dude. Uh, yeah. But I think that he also noticed, like, oh, this is a kid who just likes the motorcycle and he was going to school. Yeah. So they didn't find anything. They impounded my bike, but he was supposed to take me to jail, you know, and he didn't. He was like, all right, get out of here. And so I just had to walk. So then I just, like, walked my ass to fucking college and um, went to class. And yeah. I called. I was like, hey. Uh, I don't have a ride home because my, my buddy's like uh, girlfriend gave me a ride home. And then that thing was stuck in the impound yard for like 35 days plus like a signature you had to get. Uh, and it's like it's like 15 or $30 a day that mandatory. Yeah. And then um, you had to get like a sheriff's signature or highway patrol or something to get the release. And then they put like 3,000 miles on the bike. While it was in there, because I took a picture of like, no, yeah, because right when I got off and everything, uh, you know, I had someone my phone. was just riding it. Yeah, dude, someone was riding it, and they like denied it and everything. But you know, stupid boy, I fucking got my bike back, and first thing I did when I got it, whomp, 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 you know, I was fucking wheelie down the street, and um, yeah, there's a uh, kids and being young. You yeah, know, that's. Yeah. But right after that, I was like, dude. Uh, I, I was supposed to ride with that, that group of guys in the Canyon and no one called me and I was like, dude, what the fuck? And I was like, you know, messaging, no one replied, nothing. And then, um, I went back to that impound yard cause I was trying to say, Hey, you know, get, you guys rode this. I have proof, you know? Yeah. And, um, I was back there and I was like, Hey, uh, you know, there's like this blue bike right there. And I was like, dude, I know that fucking bike. Yeah. You know, I was like, dude, I know the guy on that bike and they're like, Oh, he's dead. And I was like, dude, what the heck? His no. name was Wally. He was the guy who told me about that racing line. And they must have gone out and fucking. So pretty sad. Um, I didn't know him well. Like those people, like yeah. the best way I could um, explain that is kind of like, you know, you meet someone at the track. You yeah. don't really interact, but you drive with them. Yeah. You have good times with them. Yeah. Same same type of thing. So uh, <sighs> thanks for teaching me the line, Mr. Wally. Yeah. Um, yeah. Didn't really know your name other than that, but that's what everyone called him. So did that just like change <coughs> yeah, your perspective the bike. the bike stuff? Yeah. yeah, that was it. That was, uh, it was like, I think the next week I was like, you know what? Um, I'd bought an Integra uh, that I was building on the side while I was riding uh, over those two years. Uh, as GSR, uh, I was building a turbo motor for it and everything. Whoa. And um, that was uh, how I got my first screen name. It's like Manny Killer. Because the guy who was building the motor, <laughs> his name was like Manny. Yeah. And like, he like stole a motor from me. And then the last second, a buddy at like 2 a.m. sent me a text. No, not a buddy. Random phone number. So I get a text message at like 2 a.m. Hey, your car is here. Because I went to the shop to, to like check on it. And the shop was gone. With my car, everything was gone. Motor, all that stuff. Like, he just vacated the premise. No. Yeah, his name was Manny. <clears throat> and I was like, dude, what the fuck? You know, and I'm like asking around everyone. No one's nothing. Then I get that text 2 a.m. Get in my car, call up my buddy, use his trailer. He's around the corner waiting. And it was at just like a like a residential home. Uh, it was in his garage. So I like looked at night and I shined it in there. Sure enough, my car is sitting right there. And so I uh, called the cops. 
And then knocked on the door and he woke up. He's like, hey, what's up, man? Like normal, like everything. Like nothing yeah. happened. And I was like, hey, dude, I need my car right now. Here's a pink slip. Open up the garage and give it to me. He's like, no, you still owe me money. Da, da. And I was like, you just left like yeah. the shop. Yeah. I was coming over to check on my build and yeah. you're, you have my car in yeah. your garage. Yeah. Like you stole my stuff. Yeah. And I was like, I just called the cops and they're going to be here pretty soon. So if you don't give me my car, they're going to make you anyways. Yeah. You know, and so he opened up the garage, ended up, uh, my motor was on a pallet, saran wrap with some other dude's address on it. Cause I had like my numbers from my, from my block. No uh, way. Yeah. I got all my stuff back, uh, with the, you know, exception of like, I think like a wastegate or something small. <clears throat> and then, um, yeah. Oh, uh, so he was ready to just, yeah. Part, sell it. And like, like fuck this kid type of chop thing. shop. Your yeah. Cause there's no GSR. invoices or anything. You don't take, you don't take a man's GSR. I in know, those days. dude. That's Come like on, the, man. That was the goal, dude. Uh, yeah. GSR turbo. Uh, GSR Turbo. But yeah, I got that thing back running good. Uh, ran for probably about three or four months. It's making like just about 400, which felt like 800 in those days. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Three, 400. And oh, then. so good. So good. Um, <clears throat> and on the way to soccer practice, I'm driving that thing. And I'm, I uh, just went and picked up a fender at my mom's house because I got all my stuff shipped over there. Is a brand new fender, red, because my car had like a small dent in the passenger side. Mm -hmm. It's going to replace it right after practice. So going to practice, driving, 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 driving. I'm just like, listen to me. Everything's fucking Good. beautiful, dude. Yeah. yeah. Boom, dude. Going through a green light. Someone made a legal left-hand turn right in front of me. Didn't even see it coming, bro. Just bam, slammed me. I was probably doing like 55 or 60. And then she just left-hand turn. And nailed me right in the front corner of my car. Totaled the car. Uh, a pillar was bent, you know. Oh, and yeah. I, so dude, when it hit me, like, I don't remember. I remember, like, the force a little bit, but I kind of blacked out. But I remember the noise, like, how loud it was, you know. And uh, I remember coming to, and I was just like, oh, shit. And I was like, I'm going to be paralyzed. So I was like, I started moving all slow. And I was like, oh, okay, okay, I'm good. Yeah. All right, I'm good. Okay, sweet. And I look over, and this lady's like running at me in slow motion. She's like screaming, you know. It's like sitcom or like that, yeah. you know, that scene. <laughs> yeah. And like, dude, I don't know. Whenever I have like these crazy things happen, my mind always goes to like, I'm like, wow, this is really happening right yeah. now. But it's like slow motion. Yeah. And I always picture it as like a cinematic production. You yeah. know? I'm like, damn, dude, if I had a camera right now, yeah. freaking win like something. I definitely – I can relate. <laughs> I don't know what it is like about – like your brain can just go a million miles. Like yeah. all the things you're thinking about yeah. in that it moment. It just slows time down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I don't know if it's like adrenaline or something. I don't but, know what it is either. But I mean the processing power. I wish it was working like that all the time. Oh, dude. You know, yeah. you'd be slaying stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I got out of the car and I remember uh, looking at the car and I was just like, fuck, dude. Like this was my car. You know, stock body. It was beautiful, dude. It was really nice car. Um, destroyed. Just totally destroyed. Brand new fender in the back, you know? <laughs> and I, and then my thumb kind of like, hurt. Well, this isn't going on that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you hurt your thumb again. I hurt my thumb. And uh, I remember they're like, you really should go to the doctor. I was like, I feel fine. Like, I yeah. really feel fine. My head doesn't hurt. You know, like, I don't even feel like I'm bruised. I'm like, well, what about your thumb? I was like, well, yeah, it feels sprained. But, you know, I'm not going to go to the doctors. They're going to put me in an ambulance. It's going to be like $900 or something. Yeah. So I didn't go to the doctors. And then uh, I ended up, my thumb was broken and I had to put oh. two pins in it. So, uh, and it was anchored uh, in there with the two pins crossed. And then I had this like trip to Africa that I was paying for through like this family friends for like the past three years. It's like putting like a little bit every month. And uh, the doctor said, oh, well, you can't go. And I was like, well, what? I got to go. He's like, well, those pins have to come out in six weeks. You're going to be in Africa. And I was like, well, can I just wait till I get back? And he's like, no, absolutely not. I was like, well, what are you going to do when you pull the pins out? And he's like, well, you know, we have to pull it out and blah, blah. And I was like, well, there's a paramedic who my buddy's dad is like a paramedic. Can he pull them out? He's like, absolutely not. And I was like, well, do you need like a machine to pull them out? And he's like, no. He's like, well, why can't he pull them out? Yeah. You're like, <laughs> and he I couldn't go answer. Yeah. yeah, he couldn't answer. He's like, because I need to get paid. Right. And he's like, well, I, I highly yeah. recommend that you don't go. And yeah. I was like, okay, well, I'm telling you right now, I'm going to go. Yeah, what? <laughs> so I ended up going and then uh, pretty epic. Uh, there's this dude in Africa. Uh, I think it was 
three weeks? Oh, that's two and it half though? Weeks? Like, couldn't have yeah. waited? Like, oh. I know. It wasn't that long. Yeah, that's crazy. Because um, I asked him, like, what were the repercussions? And he's like, I it, he, I don't know if he could answer me or not. I yeah. just remember whatever he said. He wasn't ready for you to question Right, right, right. Yeah. And so, uh, the top of Dune 45 in Africa, South Africa, sun just came up. Uh, my buddy's dad pulled the, the pins out. The first one was just like... Oh, no way. Yep. And the second one kind of hurt, yeah. but same that was thing, it. So, and that was it. And then we put the Neosporin on it and uh, covered it up. That was it. Yeah. And like, hey, look, guys. That guy's name is Dr. Taylor. And I actually went back. I went back. I was like, hey, dude, I just want to say thank you because yeah, you, you know, did fix your thumb. You fixed it pretty good. And, uh, you know, uh, I'm glad that my thumb's not like that way or something and yeah. not working. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. So that's uh, what happened to my GSR, my Integra. And uh, luckily, uh, I got a settlement from it. I got nice. seventeen grand, seventeen thousand dollars. And I remember my dad at the time was like, "Don't you spend that on a car?" <laughs> and I spent every last <laughs> bit of it on a '93 Mazda FDR X7. I remember so pumped, bro. Yeah. I was like, "This is it! I got my dream car. I'm gonna get it with this money." And I found a good one, and I that's what I did. Turbo two? Uh, no, no, that's a FC. FC oh, 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 sorry. Yeah, this was FD ninety three. Yeah, <clears throat> at the time you could buy them still. Um, you know the market had kind of come down. Yeah, but I got like a really low mile. It's probably like well, not super low for the times. I guess it was still low. It was like forty five thousand miles. Uh, had an aero kit, Workmeister S ones on it. Already? Single turbo conversion. Yep, all that. Like oh, painted black. Oh, and you're like in Dude, your twenties, twenty three. Oh, you know, dude. Bro, I was on You're top the, of it. Yeah, yeah, king again. I was a king, dude. I was yeah. like, this is it. You know, yeah. I was like, oh, my God. So I commuted to uh, my job down there at the coffee shop, and I was going to Cal State Northridge at the time. So I remember uh, before my street bike, like, there's this one parking garage where all the cool cars parked. Yeah. And I was like, dude, some of these cars are sick. And then the one day I came with my FD, I was like, mm-hmm. I was yeah. like dude, this is it right yeah. here. And then – um. Yeah, that uh, that kind of sparked uh, uh, like an interest in like going fast. I took that thing through the canyon and it sucked, dude. It was terrible, blown out like bushings. It was oh, like interesting. so low. The suspension didn't work. Um, you know, massive turbo that, on it. I'm learning that like the the SoCal culture is like very canyon based. Yeah, well, I mean, you got access to them. Like yeah. even now, I basically justify where I live. Yeah, because of the access I have to like open roads and yeah. the canyons, you know, mm. like yesterday I was tuning that turbo to like the FC with the one J in it. Yeah. Like I couldn't do that out here, you know, but yeah, definitely not. Well, maybe yeah, you could chance it, Yeah, but out there I can go and five minutes away and I'm on a stretch of road by myself and I can like sit there and like tweak it and like give it a little more fuel pressure, you know, do some runs wide open, fourth gear, all good. And, like, no one's going to bother me. Yeah. Uh, probably if I pass a cop, it might be a different story. <laughs> yeah. But there's, like, so much space out there yeah. that it's, like, still They might open. understand. Yeah, maybe. And then I just I just tell them the truth. Yeah. And if they wanted to take it, then they would, I guess. Yeah. <clears throat> but um, Hopefully they don't put 3,000 miles on it this time. Oh, yeah, hopefully. Uh, hopefully not. <laughs> um, but, yeah, so uh, I got that car. And then I went to Thunder on the Lot. And I ran into... Uh, well, that group of dudes that I was telling you about, Mickey Friel, um, Martin Winch, Matt Powers was there. Cool. Uh, who else? Dave Westfall. Oh man. So this Park is like. Shop Max. Yeah, Dan like, was there. Yeah. That's like and, all the OGs. <clears throat> yeah. My buddy Brandon Contreras was just getting in like with his S14, uh, buddy Tim Cobb. And, uh, I drove up there and I was like, oh, what are they doing over here? You know, cause my buddy Mickey had, had him, he was like running the event. Say, hey, dude, you want to help set up the course? I was like, sweet, yeah, I'll, you know, help out, whatever. And so I like helped set the course out, and like I was in charge of like the tires for a little bit. Then I switched to like the main, just like letting the cars on and off the track. And um, my car was right there, and this dude walks up, dude, is that your FD? I was like, yeah. He's like, dude, that thing is sick, dude. Yeah. He's like, dude, I got a turbo two. You want to check it out? I was like, yeah, yeah, so I, I do. Went over there, and I'm looking at it, and he's like, dude, yeah, this is my FC blah, turbo motor blah. And we're talking about it. And he's like, dude, I just love RX-7s, you know, Japanese drift car. And I was like, yeah. And then he's like, do you want to go for a ride? I was like, you drove? Like, I, you know, this is like, no, I knew nothing about yeah. drifting. You know, yeah, you, yeah. Just like you didn't knew. know that RX-7s drifted. No, I was just yeah. like, 
maybe this is the car, you know, like yeah. the one that I saw in the video, this could be it, you know? Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Uh, he's like, oh, dude, come uh, uh, just, you know, get in. So I, I jump in there, um, helmet on, and he takes me for this lap. And I was just like, what the fuck? That is the sickest shit ever yeah. I've ever been involved in. It feels the coolest that I've ever, the noises, everything about it. I'm going to do that with that car over there. And the guy was Martin Wench, and it was his FC that he took me in. And that was the first drift car I'd ever ridden in, like, period. And, uh, yeah, I talked to him, like, last week. We still, like, keep in touch and everything. But that group of dudes, at the time, uh, they were doing, like, multiple events, you know, one once, like, once a month easily. Uh, All-Star Bash, Glory Days, you know, so everyone was, like, out there at ASB. Um, Top Drift started and all the fun events that they used to do. And that, like, really got me into it. And, um, you know, when I got, like, to the point where I could actually tandem with them, they all kind of, like, stopped. So at mm. that point, again, you know, um, I just, like, uh, started driving by myself. Yeah. So, huh. yeah, so it was, like, uh, I'd go out to the track and, like, I'd be getting ready for, like, competition and I'd just go test my car. Yeah. Like, I didn't know what the fuck the line was or what a good line was at all. Yeah, that's, like, one of the things I noticed about down uh, in Southern California is, like, there's so much access to tracks yeah. to drive by yourself. Like, you could just right. go drive balcony, but there isn't really, like, a layout. So, it's, like, no. you, so no. you can go drive, but, like, it's not. Yeah. I think in, yeah, NorCal, there isn't really a place to go on, like, a weekday or right. when it's, like, solo. Like, the only thing, the only drifting that's available are events. Gotcha. I think that's I think that might like that's have, the camaraderie there. Yeah. That's where you have to have like the the yeah. dudes together, like get everyone's getting their car ready for the one event. Yeah. Versus, you know, out here you got like a skid pad. Like yeah. we could do it now, like where your car was ready, and like we'd call like a couple dudes and on a Wednesday we could go out there yeah. and we could tandem, yeah. you know. Uh and it would cost us 170 bucks yeah. you know, for the full day, which yeah. would be rad. Yeah. But um it was like dwindling in events to where, uh, you know, like you wanted to compete, but you couldn't afford to do it all the time. So you'd save up. Competing is expensive. Yeah, it was. Uh, yeah, it's, it's different. Like you, you have to treat it completely differently too. And it's like, if you want to win, you need to show up with new tires. Right shit, you dude. can't have all like takeoffs time. and be changing I between know, this man. tire and that tire and <clears throat> yeah. having it feel inconsistent. Like you can still, but like even back, then right like, right no yeah you had to you know you had to show up with well bare minimum a lot of tires you yeah. know so that you that was never a hold back and that includes like testing yeah you know if your car isn't ready and you're working on your car uh on qualifying or practice day there's an issue already you might yeah. as well just go home yeah unless it's like very minor <laughs> but if you're not even equipped to recognize what minor is yeah. you think oh i'll just fix this and then go out and qualify yeah. it's like Dude, that guy over there who's been ripping this whole time, yeah. you're never going to beat his line because you don't even know what the line is, yeah. <laughs> you know? <laughs> but but um, that's like with experience and everything. But uh, that brings me to the next step was, uh, you know, I kind of settled down <clears throat> and I thought to myself, uh, you know, I got to do something. I got to work. You know, I stopped playing soccer, all that stuff. And uh, I became uh, – or I got hired at Quartzville High School, the same high school that I – um, graduated from to substitute teach as long as I taught or picked up the soccer team to coach it. And then they were going to pay for my credential to become like a full-time teacher. Oh, that's cool. So they gave me like a full-time position pending these other things. Yeah. And uh, it was cool. At The first year was pretty sweet. And then the second year, the admin like ended up changing. And the guy who hired me was like, hey, man, you should come with me to this other high school and we'll start over over there. But there's a new admin coming in there, and they're probably not going to be very nice to you. And, dude, it was hell, bro. Ugh. For two more years, it was the worst time of my life in terms of, like, happiness, like, trying to figure out, like, yeah. you know, I was asking that Zoolander question, like, who am I the whole time? <laughs> so I, I love doing all this stuff, and I'm not allowed to do any of it. And all I have to do is be pissed off on Friday because I know that on Saturday I'm only going to have one left, one day left. Yeah, I'm pissed off because on Friday – I only have Saturday, which means on Saturday I only have one day left before I have to go back to work on Monday. Yeah. And it's like that's a bad time. Yeah. And um, halfway through the season, I remember getting this call, and uh, my buddy was like, "Hey, dude, uh, I, dude, I just gave Mad Mike your your phone number. Uh, he's looking for like this mechanic because uh, he's going to compete in FD, and he needs like a rotary guy." And I was like, 
oh, sweet, because I already knew who he was. You know, I was yeah. still building my car. I, yeah, I always wondered how that happened. Yeah, I was competing in Top Drift. You just got a phone call. Phone call. Well, so I was tied in with, like, yeah. Drift dudes, yeah. you know, because of the events and everything. Yeah. Uh, Mazda Rotary guys, 100%. My build thread on, like, RX-7 Club was, like, popping. It was, like, you yeah. know, half a million views, Whoa. you know, which I was, like, yeah. You know, that was, like, beginning of social media, but yeah. it was, like, where Being a king got, on the forum back then, dude, was, that was it. Everyone knew that was you. Was the pinnacle, dude, Manny Killer, man. <laughs> dude, are you Manny Killer, bro? You're FD sick. <laughs> you know, it's like, but then like I followed like all these other dudes, so it's just like you get so much information from those things, and that's how I kind of got my start into tackling these tasks on my car by myself. Yeah, because after all, yeah, fucking, that's how we all did. Yeah. And once you get screwed over by old Manny Killer over there, yeah, exactly. You know, you're, like, you're like never again. Exactly, dude. Just. If doing, I fail, doing it myself. Exactly. Yeah. This it's my own dime. Yeah. Um, so uh, that happened. Uh, I went down to Formal Drift Long Beach, met my, Mike. Uh, yeah, met Mike at FD Long Beach. He wasn't competing, but he was like, hey, our next um, competition's in Florida. We'd like to like test you out and see if, you know, everything would go good. And I was like, dude, I'll go for sure. Yeah. So I went with them, ended up driving back. And uh, he's like, hey, man, the team really likes you. And we'd like to offer you, like, a full-time position on the team. And, like, you'd yeah. be doing the maintenance on the car in between each event down at the shop in Huntington. Um, and that would be, like, the gig. And I was like, sweet. Okay. Yeah, so you're like, back. <laughs> yeah, you're, like, done. I, I, hate, like, yeah. I hate my job right now. Dude, it sucked, bro. Yeah. And I bet I bet Mike's cool. Like, I Dude, he's, he's cool totally like us, bro. He started from nothing. Yeah. And, like. As much as you guys, like, or I don't want to say you guys, but as much as, like, anyone wants to say, like, oh, he had this handed to him, he really didn't. Like, he legit was in the right place in the right time, and because he prepared himself by having, like, this wild car, yeah. you know, he, he was He noticed. figured it out early. He did, and he's still doing it. Yeah. You know, even now I catch myself, like, I'm like, dude, that's it. That's, yeah. like, you know, he'll come out with a new car. I'm like, well, that one beat the last one. Yeah. You know, and, like, maybe I'm not into that car, but it's still – ultra unique yeah. and it's just all him like what he likes he doesn't do anything for anyone else it's just like what he likes his roots all purposed into this whatever imaginative thing that he decides to create and yeah. it's pretty sweet to watch so um but yeah he hired me for two years i traveled around the world with him uh japan uh was that the first time you left wait, the country no not japan that was not first Where'd we go? South Africa was the first one. Oh, yeah. And then you'd been to South Africa yeah, from before. your trip. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that was pretty sweet. Cape yeah. Town uh, with Red Bull. So it's like we're staying oh, a five-star like, I can hotel, only imagine what that's like. Turtle Bay. I remember me and my uh, – the other crew guy's name was JT. Um, we get to the, the concierge and they're like, check in. Blah, blah. And then they're like, oh, well, you guys are in different rooms. And we looked at each other like, oh, man, that fucking sucks. Yeah. And like – like, damn. And then we, we go up to our rooms. We open it up. And we're like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, you got, like, sweets. Oh, dude. Like, built-in, like, sauna, bathtub thing. If you left the room for more than 30 minutes, you come back and there's rose petals already put back in place with the chocolates. Dude, we had a pile of chocolates, bro. <laughs> and we're just like, the best spread of breakfast buffet you could ever imagine in the morning. We'd go down there and we would get up extra early just to eat. We would gorge ourselves with unimaginable amounts of whatever the hell they had crepes like you couldn't imagine yeah. the spread everything worldly they had down there yeah. every morning you're like dude i just i just work on rotary yeah, bro. So <laughs> just want to you know twist some wrenches and stuff and yeah did we fixed his car in this shop that like they were advertising turbo repairs with like those cardboard signs yeah like that they wear like no. on the on the corner, and we're like, dude, imagine if you got your turbo like fixed by that dude. Yeah, who knows like where it would even come from? Yeah, or maybe they did a good job. I don't yeah, know. yeah. But um, I mean, you can afford to pay the dude with the sign. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> true, true. Um, but yeah, man, it just said straight up turbo repairs. <clears throat> it said turbo repair. I think I still have a photo of it. I'll have to shoot it to you, man. But it's like this dude on a corner, and it has. Cardboard, cardboard, but it was printed nice. Like yeah. someone put time into yeah. making that sign. <laughs> yeah. And then it said turbo repair call, blah, blah, blah. And it had a picture of a turbo. And it's like, if this dude's sitting on the corner with that, there has to be a market for it. Yeah. You know, because like yeah. he's so That's where all the turbo him. cars end up. Oh, <laughs> we're right here, just right in this little block. But that was pretty cool because, um, you know, that Red Bull treated us like we were royalty. Uh, that video was called, uh, 
what was it? Mad Mike. Franchuk Pass was the place. I want to say, I'm kind of blanking on this one. But oh, that stuff's so cool. It's a great video. Yeah. Um, and he just drifted this mountain pass that, you know, there's a helicopter. Yeah. Like, you know, and we're just Are you looking. hanging out, like, getting to watch the whole thing? Dude, like, I was row? there. Yeah, right in front. So, all production's around us. Every time he finishes a run or whatever, we're servicing the car, adding fuel, making sure the tires, changing the tires, you know, uh, like air pressure, anything he needs. You know, uh, one time he ended up, like, breaking uh, an axle. And then because the spacer that was in between the winters and the axle itself, there's like a tiny spacer they had to use so they could use like universally the same axle across multiple cars. Yeah. The, the ring, the little aluminum ring, it's like tink, tink, tink off the cliff. And it just says like no. right by that, it says, do not pass this baboons. And it's like, you go down there and baboons are just going to rip your arms off. Yeah. You know? So it's like, what? how do we find it? <laughs> you know? Yeah. It was crazy. Dude, that's insane. We spent like four hours uh, for about 45 minutes to choppers. And we're like, we're, we can't drive the car right now. He's like, what's going to happen? You yeah. know, we got to like cu cut this or whatever. So yeah. You guys got to do something with that helicopter. It's just like burning fuel out there. Yeah. Um, but a local guide ends up going down. We locate it with the slow-mo from the camera, see exactly where it went off, and then they just went in that trajectory. And it took them, like, probably about an hour, but they found it. <clears throat> no got it reinstalled, way. and we were able to finish it the next morning. So that was pretty cool. Um, yeah, in that, yeah. I mean, the video is pretty epic. I, don't, I mean, it got a lot of views, but I don't think it got, like, what it deserved because yeah. I, it was just so wild, like, to think about that pass and, like, the time and everything. And, um but yeah, I went all around with him. Canada. Uh, I think I went to – where else did I go, dude? The, the whole thing's a blur, man. Yeah. I went a lot of places. Was it like a short window of like – Two years. Of just two years. All Formula Drift. Yeah. All – every FD round and about 75% of his activations unless they were the home ones in New Zealand because he had like a crew there to do it. That's wild. Yeah. Man. And it was great because I learned everything. And through that, that – while I was working with him, he became like a good friend of mine, like, you know, um, and he was just like, dude, you know, you're like halfway there. You've already got all these relationships. Your car's already running. You could totally do this too. And he like convinced me to like, go for it. Just keep going. You That's know, dope, man. And he's like, you already made the, the hardest choice, which was leaving your job anyways. And yeah. now you're doing it right now. So there's no difference other than you dictating your time towards pursuing that as well. You know, so yeah. man um, of the people, dude, he was great, man. He came out to an event. He's, he was officially my first crew member that ever helped me at like a competition. No way. Yeah. And he's changing my tires and everyone's like, like some top drift round or something? He has a top drift round. And, uh, uh, I remember that I like, cause people would come up like, dude, Mad Mike's changed your tires. And I'm like, he's like, pretty yeah, normal. Boy, dude. Yeah. He's like pretty normal guy, man. If you guys just talk to him yeah. and, um, yeah, like stayed at my place and just like 100% what we would do. He's a normal drift dude, yeah. you know, just That's so loved sick. rotaries. Yeah, it was yeah. sweet. Um, and uh, yeah, that relationship still to this day. I mean, last year I went with him to Formula One and we were right there on the paddock with Red Bull. Oh, I didn't even think about that. Dude, we did you too. Got that, you got that serious dude, at experience. At Silverstone. No. Nuts, dude. That Because yeah. I was like. I'm never going to go to a Formula One race because I probably wouldn't be able to afford it. Yeah. You know, and then you fast forward and you're there yeah. with a driver and that drives for Red Bull. And like everything's just like so crazy how things progress, you Dude. know, with your that guy who yeah. helped me at the drift event. And then we remain friends. And then, you know, uh, anytime, basically anytime he can justify another mechanic, yeah. he just like calls me. And like has me come do this cool stuff. And Dude. we just like kick it and have a good time. So I think that's like the biggest takeaway is like be a good dude, be fun yeah, to be around. And right. like you'll get to do cooler and cooler yeah, stuff. Yeah, and really the drama doesn't matter at all. And it's so easy to get wrapped up into it because Drift World is like notorious, I think, for like having like these egos that like might butt heads. But it doesn't matter. And it's like you're all there for one reason anyways. And if you don't like that person, then you just don't have to interact with them. Yeah. And you also don't have to waste your time or energy on it because it's not going to help you anyway. But, um, yeah, pretty sweet, uh, that whole relationship because that forced me 
well, didn't force me, but gave me like this, like ultra confidence to move forward and start doing uh, more competitions and everything. And then, yeah, he left Formula Drift to USA. Yeah. And right when I left, dude, or when he left, I'm sorry, right when, when he left USA, I'm driving back. I'm like, man, I wonder what I'm going to do. And I was like, well, I'll just keep driving my own stuff. And I'm like driving in Ontario and I look to the left, I'm like, what the feel suspension? Because I was on Nitto with Mike. Yeah. And right next to us was, was Odie. Yeah. And so I popped in there and I was like, hey, dude, what the fuck, man? I was just, you know, I was at this shop right over here and I look and I see your shops right here. Yeah. And he's like, oh, well, what are you doing in the area? I was like, I just told you. <laughs> like, yeah. I was just driving through and I yeah. just saw your shop, dude. I didn't know this was actually your shop. Yeah. And he's like, well, yeah. And he's like, hey, what are you doing this year? And I was like, uh, I don't know. He's like, well, is it true Mike's not going to come back? Yeah. And uh, I was like, yeah, he's, you know, he's done with USA for the time being. And he's like, oh, cool. You want a job? And I was like, doing what? And he's like, oh, I need like a, a crew chief on my my team. If you want to no you know, help me do this stuff and yeah, help yeah. build the car off season and we'll go into the season. It's like, sweet, but I don't want to be the crew chief. Yeah. He's like, well, uh, well okay. Yeah, what do you want to do? <laughs> and I was like, I just want to be a mechanic because I, I want to do my own shit. Yeah. And I knew if I was doing his full time, you're in it, you're any in dude. It. Yeah. yeah. And uh, so he hired me and then I spent like four years on his team. And that's like when the knowledge, you know, because Odie was winning, dude. He was winning with the least amount that any driver had. Yeah. Right? Horsepower, what you'd bought, you'd be like, oh, he's got six, seven hundred. Yeah. And you're like, oh, it's all tuning. Right. It's it, all suspension. It was. So everything that he did was for performance. And like the way that he built the cars. You know, bare minimum, just enough, but enough to get like through an event, obviously, and be reliable, but like nothing overboard. And it was just ultra uh, efficient yeah. and it kind of showed, but then the systematic approach to everything, it's like real race car shit. And, yep. you know, the servicing intervals and how he set the cars up, you know, so then I started setting my car up like that, like from nothing to a hundred percent what I was going to be doing. Uh, all suspension alignment, all that. Do you I have did any, like? Do you have any like? What was like the biggest thing that you changed on my car that like uh, made the biggest making difference? Making usable uh, suspension, like you know, zero preload on your springs, and then cycling the suspension and seeing what it's actually doing without the spring on it. I just started doing that. Yeah, and you can see what it's doing, like yeah. toe wise, whatever. Yeah. Uh, luckily, the FD like RX seven is just like a naturally fast car, anyways. Like, yeah. In a straight line, that thing is a fucking rocket ship. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. got great suspension. Uh, real trailing arm system. Yep. And um, I can relate. Yeah, I yeah. raised the car up to where it wasn't on the ground anymore, but it didn't matter because it was functioning and it was so much easier to drive. And then, uh, you know, through those contacts with my boys way back with Part Shop Max, they're like, hey, we're going to make an FD kit. You know, let's develop it on your car. Yeah. And I was like, fucking sweet. Sick. So yeah. then we developed that whole kit. Yeah, on my car. It broke a ton of times, and then we got it right, and then we kept making it better, and now it's the production kit that's out there. Um, but the suspension, um, off-the-shelf coilovers, like on, on, I don't want to say that you can pretty much run any coilover because there is a difference to an extent, but realistically, if you set up most coilovers decent, yeah. they're going to work. Yeah. You know, if as long as you get, like, the spring rate in, like, the vicinity and it's not – the valving isn't terrible – yeah. You know, uh, also like personal preference, like Odie was running like very soft setup. Like my car is ultra soft as well. Yeah. And like. I'm on, I'm on feel. Oh, nice. Yeah. So, yeah, like so your I, car is nice. Yeah. He's and, a, yeah. Like. Yeah. It's. I think so. I think <laughs> you, it's like counterintuitive because right. I always try and set my car up like super stiff. That was what we were taught back in the yeah. day. Like, yeah, cool. yeah. 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 It's like stiff, low. And then you're like, okay. And then I like actually like softened the car didn't change the ride height but right. just softened it and like limited the the you know limited it so like yeah yeah i'm yeah. not just bottoming out gotcha, tires gotcha. on stuff yeah, and it's always like, it's, <laughs> dude like <laughs> now yeah. it works yeah yeah and like having a working suspension was kind of mind blowing just because i was like whoa like this thing is a lot faster now yeah and like the now predictable. i don't have to try as hard yet when i'm like sliding and like it's not hitting uh, body panels and shit and like binding it on the wheel well. So like, yeah. uh, you know, it's not like making me spin out and then, uh, you know, like steering angle and learning about Ackerman and that I actually learned from like Matt up at, uh, drift cave. 
Oh, interesting. All that because Park Shop Max, so we worked pretty yeah, close yeah, while we were developing yeah, all that. Yeah. He's like, hey, you know, you got to do this. Both. You got to do the toe curve and plan it out and plot it out and blah, blah, blah. You know, he's map oh, fielding. Yeah. And um, yeah. I got it like pretty dialed to where I liked it and then I loved it. And I was like, dude, my car is fucking butter to drive. Yeah. Like, I, f- I still feel that way. Like, if you were to drive it, you'd be like, damn, this thing really does drive itself. I've driven two FDs in my life. Were they ultra twi- twitchy? Uh, One was a 1J swapped. Okay. Like max kit, gotcha. Butter, oh, absolute nice, butter. Nice, like it was like nice. like so the other one that I drove was Ilya's FD. Uh-huh. Uh huh. When he had he had these like knuckles that weren't just like, cut knuckles. They were cut knuckles, but they on top of that, I they weren't like I guess their stuff stuff wasn't right. like something right, wasn't right. right something was end. off. And I, I was like hope I was like hoping it was gonna be I get finally drive like a rotary yeah, yeah. car <sighs> and like have it drive good. Damn it, dude! And he changed it since then because me Aaron and Le- Aaron Levitt, my yep, teammate, yep, and I yep. both drove it and we're like, dude, this is the hardest Something's car to drive. Going on, like, yeah. You know what it was? I can almost guarantee it. Huh. Not that I know everything about the FDs, but if the front end of that thing, if because what happened, the, it's a one piece lower control arm, mm. right? The back one, the back uh, mounting position on the thing on the back of the subframe, if that bushing was off at all and the caster changes the car's yeah. undrivable interesting all the time so if i would hit something even on the part shop max kit the arm wouldn't bend right but if that mounting position like shifted in there yeah car's undrivable i'd spin out or like the caster was off like if you're towed out at all okay if it ever gets anywhere close to like toe in Undrivable. That's the same. I think that's like a front rack thing. Yeah, my D36. Be. Like if it's towed in, it's undrivable. Oh shit! Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know. Could be that. You know. I mean, it kind of makes sense. Like, <laughs> yeah. If you like turn and go. Yeah, like you're this, like, like adding uh, like resistance. You're like adding like negative Ackerman in. <laughs> right, right, yeah. right. Not good. Yeah. But um, yeah. FD's uh, man, great, great cars. So I learned a lot from Odie and Matt, and just being in like the pro circle and their knowledge. Applied it all to my stuff, was making all these contacts, uh, started competing, was doing okay, but I didn't have like enough. Like I'd always like get to qualifying and I put down like two decent laps or one decent lap and zero out the other one. And then uh, I don't really want to like create any drama, but there's this dude who happened to be a judge who was like always giving me zeros. Mm. And like, I felt like that kind of like held me back a little bit, but I never like went out and said anything. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, go compete in like Southwest and then you qualify, you do fine and you make it to like, you know, your top four. And it's like, okay, well, how come I'm able to do it over here, but not at this one? Yeah. You know? Um, so that's like some of that drift drama I was saying. There's always, yeah, there's always politics. You're right. And then um, what happened was when I was working with Odie, uh, Falcon was like, hey, dude, you're totally competing. You should be just driving on our tires. Like, how are you doing this? And I was yeah. like, well, Every single one of these takeoffs, <laughs> dude, I had an <laughs> underground railroad going for the tires, bro, at yeah. FD. I would go around at the end of the event. Everyone's packing up and shit. All the takeoffs or their front tires. Yeah, because those will actually great. fit. Yeah. yeah. Uh, 255, 245. You know, uh, everyone was like running like very similar. Yeah. All of those go on to my buddy's uh, trailer. They, they go to the next round, the next one, and then they come back. So I would pay them like two, 300 bucks. And then... When they came back, I'd have like like thirty tires. Yeah, you know, and I just you know give them the gas money type of thing. That's the it's the the hustle, the selling candy hustle. Dude, dude. it was the same thing with the the gas, like the E eighty five. Yeah, I'd get because the big rigs like Falcon and the tire manufacturers couldn't transport fuel, so they just leave these half barrels full of like barrel ethanol yeah so i'd fill them the up good stuff yeah and have a full barrel and like i'd come back with like two full barrels of you know ethanol so i was like storing like you know five barrels of like <laughs> <laughs> fuel and like i wonder what the neighbors probably thought like dude this guy is making bombs yeah 100 like, yeah he's cooking you know? meth doing yeah. something <laughs> but i had fuel for like the yeah. whole season do you like fuel do you like fueling your passion do you like passionate fueling well fuel lab is the most passionate for fuel delivery. Fuel Lab's what I have in my car. And I'm here to tell you that if you want the most passionate pumping you can possibly get from your fuel pumps, Fuel Lab's the place. We're here for absolute passion and consistency, reliability, just absolutely getting the best bang for your buck. And that's Fuel Lab. They have anything and everything you need from your 200 horsepower car to your 2000 horsepower drag unit. 
absolute unit rig fuel lab. Get yourself some fuel lab parts from anywhere that sells it. It was actually uh, Steve at Falcon who was like, hey, dude, you know, you're competing. We have like allotment of these tires for this, like for drifting. Uh, if those tires aren't used, we just like lump them in next year. But if, if you're competing, you're just, you know, you might as well be on Falcon. So uh, that's when they gave me like a tire deal. And basically they gave me tires to go practice and they gave me tires to go compete with. And that's when I started winning because I'd go to practice with, you know, 14 rears and I'd be out there by myself. And like, that's when you just put heat into the car, lap after lap, nailing the line, hundred percent confident. And then you go to practice and you're like, oh, I've already got the line. Now it's just like being cautious type of thing. Yeah. And that's kind of like the fall of top drift. And then when drift league came out and, um, you know, they had their, what was it? Like the, just like the competition tournaments, like mm-hmm. competition tournaments. And, um, that's when I got my first license was at balcony. And, um, I remember how confident I felt because I'd been out there and the car was working and I felt so good about the car, everything. And, uh, as cocky as it sounds, like when you practice something so much and you feel that confident in it and you like leave the line and you're like, there's nothing that this guy can do that it's going to like throw me off. And mm. I already know that my car is faster. There's no way their car could be faster, <laughs> you know? And it's like, I'm just going to go as fast as I can and enter and that'll be that. And it's like, you still see that even like on fun days when you go to the track and people are entering there's some guys who are entering like second or whatever, but you're entering in third. And you're like, that guy, it's almost impossible for that guy to like see where you're at if he's always entering in second and then he tries to follow and you enter in third. Yeah. Like you're always going to leave him. Yeah, you're going to ditch you him. You know, and that's kind of like how those tournaments went because uh, I don't think people were, there's like a few drivers here and there, but um, the speed and like everything with my car was meant to like do like this one thing and you know, whether they were too loose or whatever, uh, everything was kind of aligned and it just took all those hours plus the tires to give me the confidence. And as a confident driver with a working car, you know, you're going to do decent, you know? So it just depends on who, who shows up. And, um, that's how I won my first event. Yeah. That's sick. Yeah. It was great, man. It that was, was the first event you won and you got a license. Out? Yeah. First place, man. First place. Um, and then I was like, fuck with, you know, Sean Illingsworth, uh-huh. Illingsworth, uh, cause when we all qualify, we're sitting there. I was like, dude, nothing you can do today is going to beat me and I'm going to win. And like, I felt like a dickhead, but I won. And yeah. I felt good. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, after losing so much, you know, and like, I mean, you, I'd go to, uh, like other, go to like Arizona, Southwest drift or whatever. And then like zero out and you're like, fuck. Yeah. It so, happens, man. Yeah. So when you win, you're like, Dude, I'm just going to savor this and rub it in all my friends. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to die. <laughs> you know, so that was, that was cool to do that. And then, um, you know, I had uh, introduced like my buddy to Odie. So he was Odie's crew guy, but then he was also my crew guy as well. Sick. So then like we worked with each other on Odie's team, but then when I competed, he'd come to the track and help me. So it was just like, you know, you had like a good system. Um, I knew exactly what I needed to compete and what I could get away with, you know, I uh, didn't need too much help, just the one guy. And then, uh, you know, you'd have, like, maybe a buddy help other than that. But there's nothing worse than have like, six dudes on your car and then three of them are stripping lug nuts out and not knowing and yeah. running over their tires one, and over their feet. One like, solid person is it, better dude. than, yeah. <laughs> yeah, because everyone wants to be involved, and that's totally cool. But sometimes they do have to realize that you put a lot of money into this car yeah. And like when you go out to have like fun, it's not fun for a wheel to fall off. You know, yeah. it's like there's a very um, serious aspect to like, yeah, have this. It's like personal fun. safety. Yeah, yeah. The car that you've like dedicated so much time to, like you. There's like a lot of trust. Yeah, I have been on the other end of that. <laughs> not not as a driver, but like going to help a friend out, like forgetting to tighten something. Yeah, and like yeah. Watching. Yeah, I did that to Julian. Jacobs at Mahon oh, when he was shit. driving this uh, S14 that he bought from Nauki and like lots of stuff going on and like, I didn't tighten the <laughs> the like intake uh, I didn't tighten the math oh shit so and so like he out. like let off and it's like there's no there's no blow off valve so I just pushed it <laughs> off gotcha gotcha <laughs> 
And then that was it. Did yeah. he crash or anything? Or no, just... he was good, but it was just, <laughs> yeah. Just stopped yeah. running. But like, yeah, definitely like maybe fouled out the plugs a little bit. But, yeah. Yeah. You know, like stuff like that. You're just like, oh, why did I even, why did I even jump in there and try and help? You know? Ah, I mean, you learn from it. <clears throat> yeah. I learned yeah. don't jump in and try and help unless you're like 100% <laughs> confident. Right, 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 right. And even then, sometimes you can still make the mistake, though. Yeah. yeah. So don't be too hard on yourself. Yeah. One time I was under the car, and a uh, buddy, Kevin of mine, uh, they were up there. Odie blew the motor, and something happened to where the heads were off. And then they put the heads on, and what happened, dude? I heard, like, a, a tink, tink, and then someone was like, oh, hit the ground. And I was like, no, 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 guys, didn't. I'm under the car. Yeah. I had nothing hit the ground. Yeah. They're like, no, no, it hit the ground. I'm like, guys, it didn't hit the ground. Yeah. And then, like, I kept doing what I was doing because I was, like, you know, uh, transmission, driveline, pre-check and all that shit. And get up there. Uh, and then I was like, hey, did you guys find that bolt? I'm like, no. Or, uh, like, the nut or whatever it was. Uh, oh, it was a nut. And I was like, well, how small? Pretty small. Like, well, where'd it go? And I was like, oh, right here. And I was like, well, guys, that's, like, really close to the intake. You know, if it fell in there yeah. and the motor ingests it, why are we rebuilding the fucking motor anyways? Like, what's the point of this? Yeah. And, you know, everyone's like, ah, uh, no. And I was like, well, you know, where could it have gone? Well, this just moved in, blah, blah. And I was like, did you guys check, like, in the cylinder? Yeah. And they're like, no, nah, I couldn't have gone in there. I'm like, guys, you don't know where it went. There's nowhere, there's no, like, clear path for it yeah, to, like, hit yeah, the ground yeah, right here. Yeah, yeah. That's the only place it could have gone. And, like, sure enough, we take it off, and we're in there with a flashlight, and you see this there little M6. <laughs> Oh. Little, little nut sitting yeah. right on top of the piston. And I'm like, dude. And they're like, no, no fucking way. No. <laughs> and I was like, guys, it's not even me being like ultra attentive. It's just whenever you're working on the car and you lose something, where is, where's the bolt? Yeah. It's where you least think it's ever going to be. Like you're always like, oh, it's going to be right by my foot. But it's always where you don't think it would ever go. Yeah. And it's like check there first and then work backwards. If it's not directly on the ground right in front of you, it's going to be somewhere fucked up. Yeah. You know? yeah. And dude, that there it was. And um, I think he won that one. It was in New Jersey. Uh, and he won that event. And I don't think he knows about that story. So uh, maybe I'll tell him, yeah. hey, man, you should check out this podcast. Yeah. <laughs> but, so um, like, what? Yeah, pretty sweet. A uh, little stuff like that. Did you ever, did you ever like make a mistake on somebody's car? Oh, yeah. Yeah. One time. Um, well, okay. So I wasn't directly involved. Actually, I wasn't at all, but on Mike's car, he's sitting in, it was in, in Washington. I won't say any names cause our team was kind of big. We had like four people on there yeah. and, uh, he knows who it is and he'll probably bring it up, <laughs> but, uh, we're on the, we're sitting there and we got like 15 minutes before Mike needs to go out and qualify. And, uh, we're sitting there and he's putting the side skirt on. And he's like, oh, all right, let me, uh, let me put this on, blow. And I was like, dude, just zip tie it, man. doesn't matter. And he's like, no, dude, it needs to look good. It needs to look good. I'm like, dude, just fucking zip tie it. Yeah. Like, we got more shit to worry about, and we need to do this over here. Yeah. And then, like, dude, when you're working with that many guys, you're always going to have these little, like, tiffs here yeah. and there. Yeah. And, like, we always just said how we felt because that it's easier to say what you feel and, like, have shit, like, kind of be a little bit rude, but it'd yeah. be right. Yeah. Versus, like, you don't want to say anything and then – something bad happens or something. Yep. But, you know, we had these little tiffs, but obviously this didn't save anything because when he put the side skirt on, he drilled right through the frame rail, right into the water, the water line. There's a, a coolant line that went through the frame right there. And instead of just putting the zip tie through it, he put like a, the drill bit right through it. Boom. And um, it's pissing water. And then the crew chief comes over and it's like, oh, he's like, what the fuck? <laughs> and I was just like, Oh my God, 15 minutes before. So we were in a mad hustle. Von Gittin Jr. ends up giving us this giant uh, AN water line and we plumbed it illegally. Luckily they didn't catch us, but it was yeah. like going through the cabin of the car at the time. You couldn't do that. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's going to the radiator. So we had to do that. Um, I have made a mistake. I know I have. Oh, on my car. Yeah. I made a mistake. Um, well, multiple mistakes through the years. What was the biggest one that caused a wreck? My list is my list is long. <laughs> okay, well, this here's a pretty big mistake. Yeah. So my last wreck, uh, when I like wrote my car off, right? So battle for first or second, and then I go into the wall on my lead, right? I saw that. So what happened, right? Is I told everyone, oh, I um, and I worked this out after. So I, I wasn't lying at the time. I actually thought this happened, but I was like. 
well, maybe, no, no, this totally happened. You know, like, you're like thinking in your mind, like what actually caused this? Um, so I'm on the bank and all of a sudden the front end starts going straight towards the wall. Dump the clutch, dump the clutch, nothing, nothing, nothing. So I fucking let go of the steering wheel and I'm just watching the wall come through me and it's like, Rrr! and I, there's two times in my life when I've closed my eyes and yeah. drifting and that was one of them. Uh, and I just closed my eyes and like grabbed my harness and I was just like, boom. And then I was like, okay, that sucked. But I was like, fine. Um, right before qualifying, uh, not qualifying before that, when we we're, we knew we were going to the battles for whatever, I had the car up. Um, no, it had to be before. It was a break between maybe someone wrecked. And we had a break, but I had the car up on jack stands and I had Tanner, which is OC mobile alignment, checking everything. And he, I was like, everything's good. He's like, everything's good. And I was like, let me check, dude. Get down there. And the the uh, the sh knuckle shank that goes to the upper control arm and the lower, um, I get on there and I've got my you know, big ratchet and the 22 and I'm cranking. I'm like, Are you sure it's good? And I'm like, do it. And I'm like, <clears throat> and I just crank it a little bit more. I kid you not, I thought I heard a crack. Yeah. Because it was like... You know, but it was like a metal, full on metal thing. And I was like looking at it and I, you know, do the wheel. It's good. I'm like, ah, it's good. Whatever. Fast forward. Now I think about it. It had to be that knuckle shank breaking when I was at angle up against the wall because I was here. And uh, the way I figured it out is because I thought an axle might have broken in the back yeah. because I also went below what I would ever go uh, with those axles, which like was tire pressure wise. Yeah, tire pressure on that stock. Uh, like stock, they're chrome molly axles, yeah. but at 22 was like the limit as to as low as I could go yeah. with that. If I went any lower, dude, it was like clockwork. They would break, you know? And I was like, all right, when I tested it, they broke at 18. So if I go to 19 or 20, you know, it'll yeah. like heat up a little bit, 20 will be right there. So I might be okay. Yeah. So I thought I broke an axle, but I didn't because I got in my car after that and in the trailer and I put it in gear and it, you know, and it's a two-way, so it wouldn't have gone. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So I was like, fuck. I was like, oh. And then uh, I will go up to the front and I look at it and do the knuckle shank broke. But I thought the knuckle shank broke because it hit the wall. Yeah. I think it broke when I was at oh, angle. Yeah. And it just had a little bit too much. And it just went, Whoop. and then, you know, when I went to correct, it wouldn't come back because it was already there. Yeah, you only had one wheel. Yeah, and I was like, Whoop. and it That's just already just in. like fully flopped. Yeah, so um, it was being... Oh. Too like too anal about like nut nut and bolting the car when I knew it was already good, um, and then also it was the uh, that same knuckle, um, the weekend or two weeks before I was driving final bout at Horse Thief mm -hmm. and I went off and I hit that knuckle super hard and I could have sworn it like broke and the worst thing about it is those knuckle shanks take like no time to replace. Yeah. And I have like a bunch of them, uh, but I was like, oh, that's good. Yeah. And it obviously wasn't. Yeah. So, yeah. That, um, uh, right before I like installed nitrous on my car, which I actually n never ran. I was like under the car and, you know, think you by yourself under the car in the garage and you're sitting there. And then all of a sudden there's just like this massive explosion and it blew out like the safety over pressure valve. But I was like in the garage by myself because the garage was like cracked a little bit, you yeah. know, but the sun was right on the bottle in the back. Oh, of, shit. Dude, that was so scary. It didn't like blow the bottle up, but the yeah. noise and like, I was like, what could that be? Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, mechanically, uh, like on Odie's stuff, it was almost like you couldn't make a mistake. Because it was so simple. Well, you had a list, dude, like really? a legit list of like what you're supposed to do. And you just repeat that. And if you're repeating that before, uh, you know, or after practice day, maybe sometimes during practice day, the mm. next day, you know, so you're doing the same exact list uh, for yeah. nine events, four times an event, you know, it's like, yeah, you got it unlocked for the yeah. most part. Something's yeah. off, you know, like it's on, it's, uh, it's wrong, it's wrong. But um, yeah, systematic approach to things like really helps. Uh, that, that would help like anyone at the track, yeah. you know, just make sure that their car is dialed so they can just have fun driving it, you know, but um. Yeah. <laughs> Man. Yeah. There's a lot, a lot to uh, that whole thing. Yeah. I mean, definitely attention to detail. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I can't like, I don't think that I would be a good, 
crew person? Dude, you'd be surprised, man. I think you just, you'd have to stick to, like, what are you good at? Uh, making people laugh, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> no. No. Okay, uh, well, no, your car is working. Why is it working? I think that I try and take the approach of, like, what's proven. Yeah. And, like, I... I'm I'm of the mindset of like under Titan versus over Titan. Oh, gotcha. so like I always like I'll like I'll be like oh well if it's too loose it'll it'll get loose you know like, yeah if, but it's like if it's too tight then you know then you're causing Binding. problems stuff. Gotcha. I don't know. Um, I'm talking like nuts and bolts. Like I yeah, try and yeah, like yeah. I try and go like I don't try and like kill stuff like to Got it. tighten things. Um, well, if you do, you end up like. In the, yeah. in the wall that's what I did I over tightened the shank I don't know dude I just don't have enough fucking <laughs> muscles I guess. I'm sure you can <laughs> <laughs> that's really that's really the trick is just don't work out right just be super weak and then you'll never strip anything because you, know? uh, you can't you. physically do it yeah yeah You're, you'll never be stronger than a grade 10 bolt you know yeah I, I, yeah definitely not not that strong either <laughs> um I don't know yeah I was just like I watched I was like, I, I I try to be like observant of like who drives a lot and like mm-hmm. what they do. Yeah, yeah. So I'm like, okay. Uh, E36s seem to be able to take a beating. Yeah, they're like cheap. Like to, at the time when I got it, right. it's cheap to get the car. It's okay. cheap to replace parts for it. That stuff's easy to get. Mm-hmm. Um, and then like I saw what my friend. Julian Jacobs did with his Jay Z, and he yeah. he's like the fucking car killer. So right. like, if he can, if he can drive, if he can drive, if he can beat on a Jay Z for two years, yeah. And like the motor that we put in that S fourteen was like not amazing, yeah. You know, yeah. it was like it had like a CX turbo on it, right, right, and right. like the block was just some <laughs> backyard block somebody right. had that we like cleaned up, mm-hmm. and you know, I was like, if if this that's good, like. Dude, all, all you need is, like, the right tune and, like, I don't know. Just, right, right. To get it right, you know. And that, yeah, yeah I think that's a definitely a good approach. But don't take away, like, you, your ability to recognize that, you know. Yeah. Don't, yeah, I think yeah. I'm, like, a little, like, I'm a little, like, particular. and cra- Like, I remember when I started, it was, I was, like, very, very particular about how I needed things to be perfect because I wanted to drive well and I wanted to drive a lot and I, like, didn't want the car to be the problem. Right. But then you, like, get past that and you're, like, okay, well, I, like, you know, I can do all that stuff, but you never know. Right, you know? And right. Then at, and at that point, it's just being prepared after that. Yeah. Like, the prepared part, I think, is a is a huge one. Like you said, you want to get another subframe. Yeah. You know, it's, like, you recognize it. Yeah. You know? But, like, like yeah. don't let old age – I'm not saying old age because I'm much older <laughs> than you – but don't let old age trick you into like letting those things go. Cause I feel like once you get to a level, there's like a grace period where you're good to go and you're just going to maintain it. But if you start letting it go, you'll go backwards. I'm getting there now. Yeah. Don't let it happen. Yeah. You got to so stop. Like, I'm, <laughs> Check yourself. Yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to redo all the wiring on the car because yeah. I did it eight years ago. Uh, and it's, it was all like Amazon relays and stuff. <laughs> gotcha. And it's like starting to kind of like, I mean, it's been good. Yeah. 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 I'm, no, like... I'm no, I'm no, I'm no, I've seen your work. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a, like the company's pretty good now. Yeah. I've but... seen your work, but I, like, yeah, it's, I'm nowhere close to that, but ah, it seems. It doesn't need to, in order for it to work. Though. Yeah. Yeah. Mine's, mine's definitely like farm barnyard wiring, but it's. It's been going. Hey, eight years is a good yeah. testament. Yeah. So, like, that's lucky, I think, too. Yeah. Oh, it's not lucky. You, yeah. I mean, if you put time into figuring out how it really works, there's only so many ways you can go with that. Yeah. You know? And if you do it right, like, eight years says that it worked. Yeah. So, obviously, how'd, you got it right to an extent. How would you get into the wiring side? Because that, I feel like, is one of the things that most people are, are afraid of because yeah. it's – it's really like theoretical and like it is relays are confusing. They can be, they yeah. can be for sure. Um, uh, it, it started with, um, uh, me just wanting to redo my fuel pumps, mm-hmm. uh, the wiring on it. And I couldn't pay someone to do it and I wanted it to be done a certain way. And the guy that I talked to was like, Oh, you gotta do this. And I'm like, I don't want to do it that way. Yeah. And I just want to one switch, two pumps. Yeah. And, um, so I just rewired my own fuel pumps and then, you know, someone, 
like during the off season in FD and then even on Mike's team, we ran into like some electrical issues. They always, Hey, Aaron, can you do that? Yeah, I got it. Hey, because I had like an idea. And then, um, uh, when I rewired my whole, uh, my, like the FD, uh, got like a grasp of like what it took, you know, to like get this whole thing done and do it like decently, like, you know, which now I look back and like, dude, that thing was kind of a hack, but <laughs> it still worked, Yeah, you know, but then I kept getting better and better. And, uh, during the off season and formula drift every time. So I'm like, Hey, we heard you wire cars. You want to wire this car, you know, for like formula drift. And it was like, formula drift was like still where people were using like ARC panels in their cars. Yeah. And yeah. Farouk asked me to wire his ARC. Don't, like, Don't do that. Yeah. Those things are terrible. And I had one in my car and it actually like zeroed me out once because huh. it's still using a mechanical like contact. If this is like the electrical bit, it like the relay closes or the switch touches this thing and then it's really thin metal. So after a while, it like, oh shoot. Well, don't worry about it. That, that's not gonna. I don't think so. Okay. So after a while, like that, the electrical contact would like not be as tight. And then if it jumped off, it would reset the channel and then like the fuel pump would turn off. Oh, interesting. But what happened to me is I put my ECU on that channel. And so it killed the ECU and my car dies at the top of Horse Thief. Oh. And I'm like going towards that giant cutout. And then I just hit that thing. Boom. And I'm still surprised my car didn't flip to these, like to this day. It yeah. hit it so hard. Tacoed the wheel and everything. Where, Subframe. Where on Horse Thief? You know, at the very top, when you right when you enter yeah. the judge judge section and then there's a giant like cutout in the on the side yeah that oh so you went to the left to the left <sighs> yeah yeah and then i was in the dirt gone off there it's yeah. gnarly and then also like <laughs> so you go steep. far enough you're right going right. down it's to the really other side steep and yeah. you don't realize it until you're crashing yeah. there <laughs> you know um otherwise it's all smooth like <sighs> yeah you know yeah. i went off there just because i ran out of talent <laughs> oh shit <laughs> oh, that <laughs> happens right yeah well maybe there's uh there's a reason why you didn't run out of talent. You probably just were trying something different. I was I was leading Kazuya and I was trying to be super sick. And uh, I, ultra and fast and, and I blew off. Yeah, I yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, that, that happens. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, so it, like reset all this stuff and then I zeroed out of the competition and then I went home. And I was like, dude, what the heck happened? I was trying to figure it out, figure it out, figure it out. Next week, I'm sitting there and I'm like, I'm just going to hit my roll cage with this because obviously it's like an electrical issue. Yeah. You know? Hit my roll cage, car shuts off. And I was like, what the fuck? That's so weird. Yeah, and it ended up, I chased it all the way to the little control panel and the little ribbon. And it was plugged in and everything was good. But inside, those ribbons have to be either soldered to like something or something has to contact it in order to like give it the signal. And whatever it was had broken or vibrated or come loose to where uh, if you hit the roll cage, it would disconnect and the whole thing would reset no and turn the car off. So, um I mean, some of them got – some people still run them and they get lucky. Yeah. But the – I've had three people – I put people. a few of them in. Okay, yeah. Yeah. And they're all fine? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Th it, I've had like, you know, probably three people contact me and say, hey, these are fucked. And the other ones that I installed, which is probably like 10 or 15, were okay. Yeah. So maybe it's a run of them. Yeah. But mine was one of them. And then uh, uh, Matt – field actually called me one day and said, hey dude what's up with these arc panels da, 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 da. well these saying that this happened and this and i'm like dude just use something else because the same thing happened in my car yeah all right, all right cool and that was yeah. it yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah yeah but um yeah so it's like i'd rather just not chance it if you got one that's working don't change it yeah. you know it's probably fine yeah uh you know but if someone were to come to me i just wouldn't recommend it because i don't feel like guessing with someone's money yeah you know? yeah um but yeah so i started wiring cars in the off season uh, you know, I did like Gene or Dean, yeah, Dean Kearney's Viper once. Oh, weird. Um, what was that? Like, I mean, I guess it's just, it's the same it thing was, every time. It right? was, it was, um, you know, it's like a different setup, but it was the same thing. Yeah. Uh, that was probably like seven years ago or six years ago. Um, and then, uh, you know, Odie's stuff, uh, but he was always wanted it his way. So it was like very minimal. It was always like plug in stuff, which makes sense. Yeah. Cause like get something off the shelf and plug it in. And then he's always like, well, why should I do it like your way? And I was like, well, my way, all these small issues, you're never going to run into. Like that will be like 100% solid because the guy who taught me <clears throat> was uh, uh, James Lynn Motorsport. They do like off-road Baja. Is a, yeah, that's who you want to learn from. Yeah, the guy named Mario, who's like their lead uh, technician, he was like, hey, dude, you're doing this pretty good, but you should totally do it this way. And like he like started like 
kind of micromanaging stuff and I was like bugging him all the time about this and he kind of showed me mm. like the right way to do it. Um, How'd you get linked up? With uh, Cause I was following like all these mil, mil spec loom things online and I just DM'd him, you know? Oh, interesting. And I was all like, dude, right. this guy's the guy who does all those from James Lynn. I was yeah. like, I'm going to follow him. And yeah. I messaged him. I was like, Hey man, uh, how do you do this? And he's like, Oh dude, don't do it that way. They say do it that way, but you really got to do this. And, oh. I was like, oh. and then, um, you know, I was like documenting it, like how I did it. But then I ran into like Chris Eimer who did all the dye stuff. And he was like, dude, the MoTeC guys, they come in here, they take all these measurements, blah, blah, and they take it home and they build it. That's how you should be doing it. And I was like, well, how do you do that? You know? And I, yeah. I was like, well, I guess you got to take like points of like, you know, like there's only one oh, no way. To, so, that's so sick. Dude, there was a ton of like ways to do it, but it was all up to your imagination. So then you just go through this rabbit hole of looking at how these are done. And then like nothing makes sense until you start looking at it like, oh shit, there's like six looms here, but you know, this one's technically like a chassis. That's the engine harness. Here's one for the cabin. Here's for the rear of the car. And this one's going to the, to the roof. And then this one right here is a little sub loom for, you know, the integration for like the PDM. And like, wow. Okay, well, you know, if yeah. you just, you know, follow this one methodology, then you can just build them all um, like similar. And if the only thing that changes is the components being used and the lengths. Yeah. So um, yeah, I started dumping like every cent that I made into the materials and the tooling because the tooling was really expensive and everything that I made, uh, I could make more when I was doing that. And I had like the tooling now. So um, yeah, then I started charging what, you know, those companies would be charging and like pumping out work. And yeah, I'm still doing it now. So right now we're actually doing Reese Millen's Baja 1000 truck. Which is nice. It's got like a Dakar uh, V6 Toyota motor in it. That's like one Dakar the past three seasons in a row. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah. It's like this like direct injected badass thing. And I actually don't have time to build it myself. Uh, so I'm like doing the entire document, um, designing everything, taking all the measurements and then sending it to my buddy overseas, and he's gonna build it, uh, and then I'll just pay him what it, whatever he wants for that to happen, and then um, I'll install it and like do the end terminations and everything. And it's all as crazy as that sounds. It's like because mil spec or military grade or like auto sport connectors are all like so similar. There's only really like one way you can do it well, yeah. and so because we document. It doesn't even matter now. Like I could look at whatever he's got documented and I know already like, yeah. oh, what part this is. And the only thing that changes is the verbiage, you know, like yeah. what they decide to call this branch or that branch versus like, you know, mine would be like uh, CH1 uh, would be like chassis one, you know, or chassis rear, you know, so like or chassis front and chassis rear would be like the two chassis breakouts. But he might call it like interface R. And you'd be like, what the fuck's interface? <laughs> I'm like, oh, that's the interface for the rear of the car. I'm like, oh, gotcha. Yeah. You know, but it's like little stuff like yeah. that. But if I just read the document, I would see that the fuel pump's on it. You can't go on the front of the car. It's got to go on the rear. Yeah. So like, you know already. So it's like, it's pretty cool once you get into it because it's never ending how much detail you could put into them. So you go in like these rabbit holes. And again, same thing. You just like could do it for like 14, 15 hours a day. And you're like, oh, this is great. It's awesome. Listen to music, just looking at wires, designing, going back and forth, making it better and better. And then once you keep doing them, you figure out the next one, what you could do a little bit better, a little bit better, a little bit better until it's just like this ultra sleek, uh, less clumpy, uh, simple, <laughs> like nice loom, <laughs> yeah. you know? So yeah, there's a lot into that. Um, and then I got a, an employee now, his name is Russell. Uh, and he works like on the weekends and everything. So, uh, we're trying to do like these little power steering pumps, like electric power steering pumps where it's just like a plug and play type of thing. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Using, uh, uh, just like the Holden, uh, Astra power steering pumps. Have you felt any of those things or mm -mm. all electric? Pretty sweet, dude. Yeah. Yeah. It's just like two wires. One would go to the alternator, the other one would go to the block and then you have a switch and then you turn it on whenever you want. So if your car's off, you still turn it on. And you can like turn the car and everything when the car's off. And then I have it on my car. Uh, I probably installed like six or seven of them. Um, yeah. I put two of them on like product or a production, uh, I'm sorry, episode cars for the Motor Trend show that I'm on. Mm -hmm. um, that works. 
And uh, you can put them anywhere, dude. You can use them, and it's like less parasitic drag on the engine. Yeah. You know, one less belt, still hydraulics, but electric. And as long as you have like a decent alternator, it's good to go. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, man, it's rad. So we got like twelve of those pumps that we're gonna do this little production run on, trying to figure out like a a good price point where it doesn't like break the bank, but we're still like doing something cool. Yeah, you know. And then, um, yeah, that way people can have like a sweet power steering system. Yeah. Uh, or electric power steering system. Well, because there's like so many applications now, like <laughs> yeah. going forward, like we're pretty much like only going to have like for drifting or yeah. even just people building cars, there's only going to be so many motors that we can use. And like a lot of them don't have power steering pumps anymore right, and right. all this other stuff. So it's like, you have to have those options. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, you can buy those pumps pretty cheap, but then people are like, Oh, how do I hook it up? So, well, it's really not that hard, but if we offered like a nice plug and play version, there's no reason why people wouldn't, just yeah. do it that way. And especially people if it are, looks nice. People are like afraid of electronics. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they are. I was one of them at one point. But then if you just jump in and try it yourself, you can totally do it. Yeah. Well, maybe you can. But yeah. you'll know very quickly if you're if you're gonna get the hang of it and you just like spend time on it. And because everything that I've tried, like, you know, I totally have messed up a million times with like certain things. Like there's been times when you know, I fried a fuel pump or, you know, I wired a relay incorrectly and I go to turn the car off and one turns on and then one goes to the wrong thing on the relay and the fuse blows or something. But it's like, oh, you just learn that you have to be ultra meticulous. That's the word. Yeah. What's up, you cool cats and kittens? Cora works. Is this an ad? I think so. Cora works got the coolest engine bay dress up stuff. You can buy parts from them. They could build you a prospect car. They could build you an FD car if you got the money. And if you got the money, you should definitely go to Cora Works and spend it. So shout out Cora Works and all the homies there and all the out of this world stuff they're doing and all their cool builds and all the cool stuff they're doing. So at least go follow them on Instagram because their FD recaps are the funniest thing on the internet. Love you guys. Yeah, I've been watching your story and like seeing all this cool stuff you're doing with like Motor Trend and you're like building... Oh. Building more RX-7s. Dude, you have to. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, pretty sweet. So uh, when I was working on Odie's team, I ran across this dude who kept saying, hey, man, can you explain, like, what happened? He'd be holding, like, a camera. And we'd be at, like, Long Beach. And, you know, something would happen with Odie. And uh, there's this guy filming named Jesse Wood. And him and Matt Field have this little thing called Frenemies. I don't know yeah. if you heard of that. Yeah, I saw it. It's like a YouTube yeah. series. And um, before, Donut Media actually put that on. Oh, interesting. And it was just like a video that they were going to do. They're going to follow these two frenemies because both of them were on uh, the same team and like just kind of document and make like little episodes about it because it's like funny to watch these two competitors be friends but also like want to beat each other. Yeah. And they need someone to explain what happened to the audience, what was happening, like a five-minute call. Oh, we can't really touch the car or we're all sitting here waiting for the judges to tell us blah, blah, blah. Or uh, Odie just lost. You know, but he'd always ask me, hey, what happened? And, he, you know, I'd have to tell him what happened. And then a few months after that, he's like, hey, dude, um, we're doing this. We want to make like this TV show. Well, for uh, this this show. And we have uh, three hosts, but we need an, a fourth host. There's going to be two teams. And we'd like you to be a part of like low team on the show. And I was like, well, what is it? And they're like, oh, we're going to build two cars. So one's going to be like a high car with all the expensive parts. And then there's going to be a low car with all the cheap low end parts and you're going to be like on low team. And I was like, sweet, I'm in. And like, um, that was the start of like donut media's high low. And so, um, yeah, it was me and Nolan on low team and, uh, Zach and, uh, James on high team. And I think we did like three seasons. And so like that being a mechanic opened up to being like a host mechanic. Cause I was like talking to camera just because Jesse wanted someone to explain what yeah. happened, you know, at an FD event. Yeah, yeah. And then, uh, you know, uh, yeah, that went to like three, three or four, three seasons, I think. And then, um, you know, I was still like independent, like working for myself, doing this same stuff. But um, all while wiring cars, all while wiring cars, all while still racing, yeah. you know, myself trying to, you know, build this ground up racing program and, <laughs> yeah. you know, be like this, like, you know, figure or whatever. And uh, throughout all of that, though, I was always like, OK, what's the end goal? And it was always like, okay, I love working on my own stuff. That's always going to be there. You yeah. Know? But driving has always been like something I enjoyed so much 
but couldn't do all the time because I was always trying to make it to where I could drive. Yeah. You know, and I think so, that's pretty relatable. Yeah. It's like, like if I could just drive all the time and not work on things, you know, or not feel like I had to work on the things. Cool. Yeah. But like, I like working on things, but driving is just like so much fun all the time. Uh, even when I'm driving something dumb, it's like still rather be doing this than, you know, fixing it. You know, like if I have no agenda to work on something, different story. I'm like happy. Yeah. Um, but anyways, uh, the goal, yeah, long story short, the goal was always to like drive for a living. That's where I landed. It was like, okay, how do I become this thing that could just drive and make money doing that? And I was like, dude, I thought like for a long time I could become like the next Von Gittin Jr., you know, like in Formula Drift. I was like, I could be different enough, you know, drive this special car and do it this way. Yeah. And like, you know, that didn't work out. But like my whole thing when I got my license was to jump straight in to FD with my car. And then when they changed those rules, do you remember uh, like the, the big rule changes? Yeah. Yeah. So basically no sequential transmission. You had to use their like ECU. And then uh, between those two things, I was like, dude, my car would not be competitive. Yeah. Because, you know, my car makes no torque. So if I went the four speed, I'd have to get a winter's quick change. So yeah. now – I'd You're have to rebuilding go. your whole car. Yeah, it's like I need a new transmission and a quick change for the car to be geared correctly to, you know, have the correct wheel speed to compete. Yeah. And like – I wonder why they didn't know sequential. They thought it was uh, like an entry-level thing to where it's too expensive for, uh, you know, for like that level of cars to have. Mm. But I my argument was, look, if my car can't just use a four-speed and have the gearing to do that because there's no diff – like ratios available, that means I have to spend twice as much to put a quick change in the car yeah. as well as like a four speed gearbox Yeah. instead of just putting the transmission and being okay. Yeah. You know, and like they wouldn't have it type of thing. Yeah. And then there was custom firmware on my ECU that Mtron actually developed to run these uh, injectors along with these secondary ones. Um, and they were like, oh, well, just give it to, just give it to Link and then they can, you know, put put it on there, ECU, and I'm like, you like, spent oh, like yeah. six years like yeah, making this thing run the like intellectual titties. property. Yeah. Like, yeah. So ridiculous. And I yeah. wasn't just gonna burn these guys who basically gave me all of that for free with our time and as an investment, which obviously is a lot, but it's like that's like a relationship. Like I don't I haven't ran that car in two years and I still talk to Ben at Mtron weekly. Yeah. You know, he's like a good friend of mine. Yeah. It's like I'm not gonna do that. Yeah. So um you know, between those things, it was like 40 grand I would have to dump into the car to make it competitive in the same season as my debut to like Pro 2 or yeah. running, uh, I think it was a super drift event at Long Beach. Yeah. It would have been my first one. And I was like, I can't make this happen in three months. There's no way it's going to happen. Yeah. And yeah. um, didn't happen. And so I was like, well, you know, at least I got my licenses. Um, <clears throat> I got in, introduced to a bunch of stunt guys, which was – like one of the open doors, I was like, dude, how do I get into that? Because I thought yeah, it was that's driving for a living. Yeah, and I was and like, if when you're when you're a kid like riding BMX, movies, like watch yeah. it, like you're like watch people like slide right. cars around. You're like, that's somebody's job. Like, how do I get? To I do know, that? I know. Yeah, that's exactly it. You know, even when like Fast and Furious came out, I was like, yeah. dude, I could do that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I already yeah, do yeah. do that. Yeah. But they're just putting it on film. Yeah, you know? yeah why yeah. can't I be there? Yeah, and um. Yeah, so uh, that was the way in, and then uh, th that wasn't going to happen overnight, though. So I was like, if I can just stick around and drive enough and meet the right people, then maybe I'll be in accepted into this, like, stunt world to where they need, like, a driver, and I'll be that guy, you know? Yeah. And, um, you know, it was – that was an option, which was, like, always been, like, my number one, like, dream job. And then there was a host mechanic, which um, I'm kind of like – I don't, what do you call it? Introvert or extrovert? Which one doesn't like to like? Introvert is like more of the homebody. I, doesn't yeah. like to be around big groups of I'm people. I'm pretty happy like in the garage, just yeah. working on my own shit. I see. You know, yeah. uh, a good, good couple, two, three people, good go. Yeah. You yeah. know, it starts to get like big group, yeah. and like I'm like, eh. yeah. You know, I'd rather just be spending that quality time with the little groups. Yeah, uh, nothing wrong with vice versa, but that's like kind of me. Yeah, and so the attention I wasn't really uh, happy with. But uh, which is like uh, doesn't seem like it because like you look at my car and like, dude, that fucker is an attention whore. I but, think there's like kind of I don't know. <laughs> I think that's like a thing with drifting. Like yeah, we like the that's, cars. That's right? your 
that's your like the extra version. Right, right, right. Yeah. No, that's exactly the, it. Like, you're like, I'm going to let the car do the talking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of thing. Yeah, and dude, for sure, man. Yeah, because that was, you know, and then like in, from a marketing standpoint, I was like, dude, that car shows up, everyone's going to notice it. If it's super loud, you know, hot color that everyone's like, you can't take your eyes off of it. Yeah. And like, I don't even care if they know who drives it, as long as they know the car, because yeah. the car is like the brand. And yep. um, that's uh, why the car looked all radical. And um, luckily from the Netflix show, I was able to make it look that way. Yeah. Because for a long time, it was unpainted and black and like yeah. mixed match colors. Yeah. And, you know, white panels here and there. Um, which actually brings me back to the name of the car. You want to hear that story? Yeah. Well, so back with that group uh, that I first started with, they're like, oh, dude, you got to name your car. And I was like, oh, I already got it. And I like read a lot of books. Um, have you ever read A Life of Pi? Mm-mm. Oh, it's like with the the tiger and little Indian kid and they go on the boat and then there's like two other people and then the tiger ends up like eating the kids, you know, and like. Yeah, but I, I think I'm I think I'm familiar with the story. Gotcha. Yeah. Well, at the end, the tiger doesn't end up eating them. What happens is they were murdered and like something happened uh, to where they didn't want the kid to notice what really happened or the kid was in his mind changing the story to make it hurt less. Like the tigers ate them, but really they were murdered by people or something like yeah, that. Yeah, interesting. But uh, I was all into that book. Well, you wouldn't be able to tell because I don't even know what the fucking story is. <laughs> um, and uh, I was like, oh, dude, the tiger's name was Richard Parker. Mm. And I was like, dude, Richard Parker. And all my friends looked at me. I was like a fucking idiot because they didn't read books. And yeah. I was like, oh, guys, you know, if Richard Parker, they're like, what is that? And I tried <laughs> to explain it to them like I did to you. Yeah. And they looked at me like you're looking at me. Yeah. And they're like. <laughs> And then uh, they're like, dude, the car's black, bro. It's like more of a wolf than a stupid tiger. And then <laughs> they said, that was it. That was a wolf. And I was like, wolf? I was like, wolf? Like, what? No, nah, Richard Parker. And they're like, no. Nah. So every time, like, hey, where's a wolf? I'm like, guys. Uh, that's all, yeah. And then it stuck. And then, like, that was it, the wolf. And now your company's. I know, everything yeah. with it. Yeah. Like, uh, I have, like, my like a act like a drive my driving company for like the stunt stuff it's wolf motorsports drives yeah and then wiring wolf motorsports wire yeah and then yeah that's like uh the wolf <laughs> yeah <laughs> the and so it like wolf. literally wasn't what you wanted to call it no. someone named it for and you and then it took over everything and yeah. now i'm just like dude that's pretty sweet actually yeah it is yeah. pretty sick <laughs> but um yeah, so uh, I was working for Donut Media, being a host mechanic, and that was my second option because I was like, well, I'm still driving the car, but I'm also getting paid to work on the car. So that's like a good compromise, yeah. you know, and it's with good people. Yeah. And, um, you know, that got like a lot of traction on the social media front. So then I started using that marketing to like, you know, help with the car and everything. It's just like you never market for like one entity. You like – use yourself as like the platform so like you know they'd be like oh well you know what's that going to get us and like oh well you know i'm on donut media and i'm going to be like wearing this sweatshirt the whole time yeah you know but i'm also going to be wearing this at the events so it's like well we if we get aaron parker instead of just like the drift events then it's like a blanket and we get way more and like i always attribute that to like why i still have those relationships because everything i'm involved in now I just like bring these companies who have like been with me since day one. Yeah. And now it's like really good relationships because they know that I'm not going to like just take their stuff or whatever, you know, yeah, it's always coming not, back to Yeah. Them. They're not. Yeah. yeah. So that's, that's worked out. <laughs> um, yeah. And then uh, a guy from Donut ended up leaving and going working at Motor Trend and then called me. He's like, dude, I got another show, man. You should totally come over and do this, this other show. And I was like, well, what was the show? They're like, well, we're, you know, it's like a, racing and this and that and da-da and you know dan brockett's gonna be there and uh shay seafelt and um our buddy eddie's gonna shoot it and i was like well if eddie shoots it i'll be there 100 percent." yeah and uh we did three seasons of that's called runs good but during the third season uh which is breaking news is they actually canceled the show yeah like last week oh man so you hear it first right yeah <laughs> yeah but they i mean there was 10 shows they canceled 10 shows and I think their streaming services, they uh, probably axing and they're going like a different direction. Whoa. So it's kind of a big move. Yeah. But um, yeah, I don't know if I was supposed to say that or not. Yeah, we can wait to put it out until. Okay. Well, maybe I could just, yeah, you could put it out whenever. Honestly, I don't think they're going to care. Yeah. Um, so, but yeah, uh, so that show got canceled. 
And then weirdly, because uh, I stopped working at Donut because I was doing uh, my wiring, uh, stunt driving, uh, which yeah. is another freaking endeavor, which, f- dude, this is a fucking nuts story. Let's go, Episode dude. one. Episode one for Runs Good uh, with Motor Trend. I'm on the airplane. I'm like, dude, did I make the right choice? You know, it's this show is being shot in Albuquerque. Yeah. Didn't want to leave. I just, my daughter was born three days after I crashed the wolf. And, uh, oh my God, yeah, so dude. that's why the wolf is still in the back of the trailer, just sitting there. Yeah. It's like, dead. Oh, you haven't touched it. I haven't touched. No, I started it twice. It yeah. still runs, yeah. which is awesome. Yeah. Um, but I haven't touched it since my daughter was born and she's two years and three months now. And yeah. then my son is a year and two or a year and one month, January 25th is his birthday. Pretty sweet. So I got two kids now. It's pretty yeah. sweet. Yeah. Um, they're awesome by the way. And then, um, yeah, so I've got that. Uh, I'm on the plane and I'm like sitting there. And this guy walks in, hey man, you got, you got a helmet? And I was like looking at this guy, like obviously I'm like I'm holding yeah. a helmet, you know? And I was yeah. just like kind of contemplating like why I was on the airplane because yeah. I don't really like going to Albuquerque, you yeah. know? Yeah, like yeah, yeah. the track is sweet, but it's not like my favorite place. And yeah. then when you go for those types of things, I didn't know how it was going to be. And I like to know before I jump into things, but mm. this one was kind of just like, I'm just going to do it. See you what know, happens. COVID happened. So it was like, yeah. what's happening with the world? Yeah. Might as well just take work while it's coming. Right. Yeah. 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 So, and I had the kids, you know, so yeah. I was like, yeah, you got to do it. Just do it. You know, still automotive, still whatever, yeah. Yeah. but I had to be gone seven times for seven episodes. So that'd be like nine days every time, seven times out of the years, which is like, when you have a kid, you're like, fuck, that's a lot of time. Yeah. Um, so I'm on the plane. The guy asked me about the helmet. And then I noticed he's wearing a helmet too. Or he's not wearing, but he's got a helmet too. And I was like, dude, you got a helmet. And he's like, yeah. He's like, what are you going to Albuquerque for? And I'm like, oh, I'm uh, going to do this motor trend thing. We're going to build this car and then we're going to go test at the track. And I was like, what are you going to Albuquerque for? He's like, dude, I'm going to drive backwards down this mountain uh, on this like film. And I was like, well, that sounds exactly like what I would love to do. Yeah. <laughs> and he's like, he's like, oh, no. Oh, yeah, I'm a stunt driver and this and that. And I was like, dude, honest to God. I, that's always been my dream job. Yeah. You know, and, I think a lot of jerk people. Yeah. And I, I just told them like exactly what I was doing, what I'd done, all this stuff. But that turned into like the hostess lady asking us to keep it down. Dude, we <laughs> were talk. We talked for like two and a half hours on the flight all the way over there. Yeah. Uh, we got off the plane, you know, it was almost like I'd known the guy for like a long time. And, um, uh, we got off the plane. He's like, Hey dude, can you give me your details? You know, I probably use you sometime. Um, and I was like, yeah, dude, that'd be, that'd be awesome. So I gave him my details, you know, I do this episode and I'm, you know, kind of forget about it. And then, uh, about three or four weeks later, I get this phone call. Hey, uh, is this Aaron Parker? I was like, yeah, that's him. Oh, dude, my buddy, uh, Greg Tracy, he, he met you, um, on an airplane. He gave me your contact info. I need a, a double, uh, for Anthony Mackey. We're shooting this like TV show over here in, in Louisiana and we think you'd be the perfect double. Do you want to come? And I was like, yeah. Yeah. And boom, I was all of a sudden, my, yeah. Uh, for That's Anthony Mackey, dude, That's twisted crazy. metal three and a half months in Louisiana, like sliding inside of a mall, jumping through glass oh, windows, being exploded, so driving through these huge explosions, like everything you'd imagine 60 mile an hour, e-brake turns into the, you know, dust just to hit like, sand all over the camera don't hit this be here hit the mark blah blah blah. you know it's like and you killed it dude it was the best because nothing can replicate the fear that you are in when you're in a drift car going fast doing something like like kind of sketchy yeah you know and like it it is very difficult because i know like a lot of people oh dude stunt driving is so easy there's been times i was like fuck dude this is actually really difficult yeah and like by the end of the day you're like your mind is done Because you're so cautious about people and, like, the dangers of it. Yeah. Because legit, when you're – like, stunts is one thing, and that's very dangerous. When you're in a car and there's 200 people walking around the set all the time, and all of them, it's like they're looking at a wall. Yeah. People walk in front of you all the time, and you could hurt someone and, like, damage their life like that without even thinking. Yeah. You know, think about, like, a super crowded, like, drift event and, like – you're looking up, you're backing up or you're, you're about to go forward and, you're, and you look up and they're just sitting there and you're like, dude, does this guy not hear my super loud car yeah. and me yeah. pulling forward and see this bright red car yeah. right in front of him? Yeah. That's everyone on set. 
all the time. Because they're all on their own. Dude, they're, they're all, all on their like, own super mission. busy doing yeah. stuff. And like, you know, you got a, ha- a camera sitting three feet off the car with jagged things like metal, aluminum, little like pokey yeah. things. And, um, you know, sometimes you do the same run, like on a commercial, you do the same run, you know, 60 times over two days because like it's so – the, you know, it's, it'd be like so tight that they're just looking for the car to like reveal just this moment thing so they could stop and then like show this other part. But they need yeah. to see the sand in it, but they also need to see this car way over here. So if everyone's not nailing it, they have to like get it right, you know? Yeah. And um, there have been like moments where like, you're just like, I don't want to do this. <laughs> oh, no, you always want to do it. It's so much fun, bro. You would <laughs> love it, bro. It's yeah. I get the same feeling when I'm sitting at the line about like ready to qualify or like, you know, um, cause like when you're battling, you're already in it. Yeah. Uh, when you like go to qualify, it's like the worst thing you could go through and most stressful thing. Well, I don't say the worst cause it's like really taught me like how to beat myself and like yeah. win like, yeah. versus myself yeah. is qualifying is like the most challenging thing I've ever done. Uh, and multiple times you have to do it, you know, do your best. You only got two shots, fucking zero out, zero out again. You're gone. It's like, fuck all that for yeah. nothing. Yeah. Then when you get it right. It's so rewarding, yep. you know, and if you qualify high, it's even better, but you have to beat yourself first in order to perform. And when you get older, that becomes harder because you have more on the line, or at least you're cognizant of yeah. what's on the line, you know, yeah. like you're trying to get to a place. Yeah. And these two laps are the only two things that are holding me from getting there, Yeah. you know. But, um, yeah, so I get the same feeling when I'm on the line as when they're about to call, like, action. They're like, three, two, one, you know, action type of thing. Like, sometimes it's like – all right, let's go. You know, it's pretty sweet. Um, the other night, uh, I was on a little gig. It was two nights ago, actually. And the screen was like right here. Like this guy's in back, like behind me, holding a camera in front of me, POV, drunk driving. It's like just a very simple shot. Downtown Long Beach. Um, people walking all over the place. Cops blocking off, but there's tons of people. I was like, hey, man, do you mind, um, you know, putting that down? Because like, I can't see anything. Yeah. Like I, I can literally, like I can't see anything over. I can only see like little spots in front of me yeah. and it's at night. There's lots of lights, distractions going on. And uh, he's like, oh, well, I, and I need to frame up. And I'm like, all right. And you're never rude, you know, yeah. but I'm like, hey, can I just get to like the start position first? Cause I'm just driving in a straight line for the shot. But like in order for me to get there, I got to be able to see. And I, I, I can't see anything right now. Yeah. And uh, he's like, oh, well, I really need to frame up. And I'm like, all right, well, I'll just go slow. You know, so I'm yeah. like going pretty slow and then, you know, I'm about to take a left and the cops like you know, waving me f- to take a left and I start taking a left. And, um, early on I started driving with my left foot on the brake and then my right on the throttle at all times, just cause like, I feel like you react quicker Interesting. and like, even now, like I drive when I'm on the freeway, just my own stuff. I'm always driving with my left foot on the brake. Oh, interesting. So like when I take a, when I'm like you know, uh, changing lanes. I look over, I'm always like covering the brake just in case. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah or yeah. if I make like a risky move, you know, yeah, interesting. Um, it's become like a habit, uh, that I think actually paid off because I was taking that left-hand turn and I'm going this way, this way, this way. And all of a sudden, dude, this, I see like this glimpse of what might be a person like just cross, like right in front of the camera. And I'm going to hit this person. Like I'm only going like 15 mile an hour, maybe 20, but like I'm in a corner and dude, I hit the brakes so fucking hard. The hardest that I probably ever stood on a brake. I was like, I'm hitting this person, you yeah. know? And luckily I stopped like before I hit him, but it was, it was a lady probably eight inches max. She was right in front. She put her hands on like, almost like she hit the hood. She might've even touched the hood. The people who were watching on the, you know, that camera, they were like, she slammed the hood. I was like, I don't remember that, but yeah. you know. Uh, but she looked up. She's like, are you fucking kidding me? And then, like, she, it probably made her more mad. And I don't know if it was just, like, a reaction. But, like, I looked over to the to the, the safety officer. I'm, like, staring at him. I'm, like, looking at him. And he's, like, staring at me. I'm, like, well, uh, he wasn't doing his job right there. <laughs> and then I look over, like, to the to the light. And it's got, like, a red hand. Like, stop. But then I was, like, wait, that doesn't even matter. That cop told me to go. Yeah. You know? And then I'm just, like, ah, what just happened? Yeah. You know? But I didn't yeah. hit her. And then I look up to her and I'm like smiling and she's like pissed, yeah. you know? And I'm just like, this is like something normal. Like the, at a drift event, you'd look at your buddy like, oh shit, yeah. let's yeah. go, you know? <laughs> and so that's how I approached it. But I probably should have been a little more um, 
yeah. I don't know, like sensitive to that. Yeah. You know, because she didn't have a good night probably. But uh, <laughs> yeah, there's so much that can happen. And then we did three takes. I don't even remember the three takes. And that was the end of the night. But it's like, I always tell people on those gigs, 99% of my job is to recognize dangerous situations and how to avoid them from the get go. Yeah. And that's what the productions are hiring for the most part, because anyone else, you hit them, dude, you could like really hurt someone. You know, yeah. I, I could have paralyzed her, or put her in the hospital yeah. um, and like screw the production. Like you just like killed someone or something, you know, and there's been times, other times when, yeah. you know, little effects might hit you in the face and the eyeball and stuff. And it's all a rush, but yeah, I mean, it's a great job. I'm not complaining yeah. about it. Yeah. I'm just, but there's, there, it is still a job. Yeah. Yeah. It's definitely a job. Um, but, uh, yeah, the whole, back to the whole twisted metal thing. That's, uh, yeah, I spent three months out there. Um, you would never expect it, but that guy, Anthony Mackey is like pretty humble as well. He's kind of like Mike, um, Dude, after every night we'd go out, he would take the whole production. Hey, guys, you know, go eat food. He, he'd always pay for everything, dude. The whole production would go out to, like, eat after we were done shooting. And, you know, he'd buy, like, beers for everyone. And it was, like, always super cool. Huh. And I was like, dang, dude, you don't really hear much about that. Like, yeah. you know. Uh, but he also came from not that much either. And then, yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah, he sent me a – he's like, hey, dude, happy new year, man. Uh, see you at season two because they got like a green light for the second yeah. season so uh, that should be coming up here pretty soon as well that's crazy yeah man. Nuts, you just dude. keep like dude it just keeps going and my whole thing is like i mean i what's your like what's your mindset bro like, honestly it's like go with the breeze right you yeah. gotta go with the breeze be ultra thankful and happy at all times even on the low, low dude when i used to because there was low moments for sure like when i told you i had 200 bucks in my account dude, i wasn't joking like and I've been with my wife for like 14 years now, Yeah. you know, um, and there'd be times where, you know, my car's loaded up and I'm going to go to this event and say I had 500 bucks in my, my uh, account. And I'm like, dude, I don't even know how I'm going to get back. But if I can go out there and like sell these two parts while I'm there, I'll be good. Yeah. You know, and then like your buddy's, hey, dude, you need a hand? And I'm like, I legit can't afford to pay this dude, yeah. you know. But I was always like, I'm not going to not pay my friends. You yeah. know, like if they're giving me something, I have to give them something back. Yeah. And uh, there'd be times when they'd be like, no, nah, dude, don't even care. I just want to go. So that was, you know, the good buddies yeah. type of thing. Yeah, That's yeah. cool. Yeah. But um, you just get like stuck in that, like those low points. I mean, those weren't low points. Those were like, you're figuring it out type yeah. of thing. But there was times when I was just like, dude, what is all this leading to? Like how, yeah. how can I make something out of this? But I just kept thinking to myself, there's no way you can hustle this hard, put this much effort into something and it not equate to something decent. Yeah. You know, like the wiring thing. But when I look back on it, it was just like, I've always been like a slow grow type of person. Mm. You know, I never got like, you know, you have your buddies and they're like, oh dude, my grandpa left me 500 million. You're like, cool. Yeah. You know, I'm like, all right, well, um, I got to sell uh, some wheels yeah. uh, that I really don't want to sell that yeah. I saved three years for. Yeah. Um, I'm just going to go do that. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. You know, or like, oh, dude, my, you know, my, my grandpa left me this house. And I'm like, oh, okay. that's, that's nice. That's cool. I'm yeah. really happy for you. <laughs> yeah. I'm, that's really cool. And I'm like, dude, what the, how can I ever get there? And then you get to an age where you're like, well, I'm almost like 30 and 32 when people are physically telling you. Hey, when are you going to stop fucking around with those cars? When mm. are you going to stop doing this? When are you going to get a real job? Yeah. Why'd you quit your school job? Why'd yeah, you do yeah, this? Yeah, 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 Why'd yeah. you do that? And um, at one point, actually, when I was 30, I think I was 28, I got, uh, I went back uh, to get my mortgage loan origination license. Um, no shit. Through a guy that I met on RX7 Club. Went down there. So that made, uh, Pandas FD 2002 was his handle. His name is Mike Pendosas, and he's like, dude, what's up, man? I met him. I still talk. Dude, I talked to him yesterday. Yeah. Good buddy of mine. Um, he did the my loan for my home, but Sick. I finished my loan stuff, and then Mike offered me the job because I was like, how do I get out of the school? Yeah. And I was star starting that. And so I had just finished all my loans, so I was working down there twice a week with him, and um, uh, I was like, hey, Mike, uh, you know, other Mike, because both of them are named Mike, Mike offered me this full-time business. He's like, dude, Mad Mike? And I was like, yeah. He's like, bro, 
you got to go. Because yeah. he's R7. Yeah, he had yeah, R7 yeah, too. He got it. He knew it. And yeah. he knew. He's like, bro, you can always come back to loans. Yeah. You just go take the test again and you come back. Yeah. You know, but you can't do this again. You got to go do that. And That's I was like, cool. all right. But he here's a guy who he just paid for me to do all this stuff. Yeah. You know, like. But he, he like. That's his, that would be his, he, yeah. he knows he, if he got that phone call in right. a heartbeat, he right, would take right, it. Right, 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 right. And I still talk to him. He did my home loan right now and everything. Yeah, yeah. And, um, but I was always like, dude, I met these cool, like the genuine people. That's why I always go like extra out from my friends and like I'm ultra, uh, like loyal to like these groups of people, like the good people. Yeah. I could totally, I feel like I have a decent, um, uh, what do you call it? Read radar. on. Yeah, yeah, read on like good characters and stuff. Yeah. And like when I get there, I'm like, oh, dude, that dude, super genuine, into what he does. And like I feel like the same kind of reciprocates back to me. And every time I put like time and effort into those relationships, it's always bloomed. Yeah. Every time. Yeah. Every time it was negative, never anything good. Yeah. So you start to – you grow with like age and then like all these small little relationships start to become better relationships – you know, good stuff starts happening. You start gravitating to more good things. You know, you keep on like pushing down the negative dramas and this and that's. And then, dude, it just keeps growing. Like, I don't know. I honestly, I feel like ultra, like really lucky. I feel really lucky that I was able to, you know, build something in this realm of what I love to do and then hit, like strike it on three fronts. You know, the wiring, that yeah. business is going. You know, uh, stunt driving, that business is going. Host business, Donut called me last week and asked me to do a new show. Yeah. And it's like. But that's the thing. Like, you you, you answered the call. Right, right. Like, if you if you never would have taken that step True. to go work on Mike's team. Right, right. You never would have got the camera time. Like, because you never would have worked for Odie. Like, <laughs> all those things. You know what I mean? Like, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it was that one. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to do this. Right. And then that's what I sometimes I'm like, dude, maybe it is like one of those pre destiny things. Like you're destined to do like a certain thing. Yeah. Because I don't understand how all these things could just align, yeah. you know, because <laughs> dude, you and I both know like how many friends, do you know, like can drift from there, like full burnt out. They wasted all their money on their car. They don't drive the car anymore. They want like 60 grand for a car that goes for 15 yeah. and like, you're like, dude. Like, I want my money back so I could buy the house I should have bought. <laughs> I know. <laughs> like, that's where I thought I was headed, you know? Yeah. And, like, luckily that didn't happen. But I still feel, like, really thankful and lucky that I got all these opportunities and uh, that I had the right people around me to push me. You know, Mike uh, said, dude, you could totally do the sponsor thing and, you know, get sponsors for your car. So I started doing it. And then Mike Pendosis told me to go work for Mike, yeah. you know? So I was doing the loans and he, you know, made me, dude, you got to go do it reinforce that but imagine someone else bro you're never gonna make this type of money over there and then i stay in the loans i'm unhappy yeah. and then you know that's it that's it yeah, my life goes a different direction versus i traveled the world you know i get to do what i like to do um uh, started a, another business doing what i like to do and i get to drive cars and you know that's like you don't my have main to pay day. for those cars i know that's the best part the brand new gtr like flagship a nissan hey uh, can, can you go, go jump faster? this? Yeah, yeah, for real. You're dude. like, okay, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Six uh, rear wheel drive WRXs uh, on um, uh, uh, twisted metal. Yeah, and like, dude, the test days, epic, bro. Like, yeah, yeah, just uh, uh, all rear wheel so drive. Sick. You know, like, go see what they can do. Obviously, you don't want to break them, but it's yeah. like you get to sort them out a little bit. Yeah, and then well, like, you want to get comfortable so you can like really yeah, do yeah. something sick. Yep, yep. And then you know you get confident into them and. Um, yeah, it just becomes like, you're just happy to get in the car all the time. And then they have like a pod car where the actors inside are talking and then yeah. you're driving on top and like, dude, I was, there, it was pouring rain, pouring rain. And like the production, Hey dude, are you okay? And I'm like, dude, I'm fine. I'm happy up here. Yeah. Hey, this is sweet. And I got my rain gear on. <laughs> it's not cold. You know, I'm just up there like cheese Cruising, smiling. Yeah. yeah. And the rain, like, you yeah. know, I'm like, dude, this is freaking rad, you know, yeah. going through the, like the dirt whoops and stuff. Yeah. Um, Good times, man. So, uh, yeah, I think it's just aligning yourself, like recognizing the good and the bad, always sticking to the good, always being positive. Because in order to get to a positive, you have to weed through negative. And that's just a fact of life. Mm. You know, like, and then it's like almost like you have a window to do that because the people you surround yourself with are going to be negative and positive. And 
if you are content with keeping the negative people around, chances are you're going to end up with some type of aspect like that you share in common with them. You know, whether it's that friend group or something or, you know, mm-hmm. all of a sudden you realize that you're like kind of doing the same stuff that they are that might just be sitting around doing nothing, yeah. which if that's your day off and you want to sit down and do nothing, that's fine. Yeah. But like if you're trying to grow and get to a place that you like really want to get, like if you have like a dream, you know, that you want to accomplish yeah. and you're not there yet. And you're also not happy. How is doing nothing getting you there? Yeah. You know, so you have to start making moves. And for me, it was always, okay, what's the next thing? What's the next thing? How can I get this going? Always building like the wiring in the background. You know, how, what can I do to get an employee? What can I do to get my employee to quit his job so that he can have this freedom along with me? You know, yeah. what can I do to uh, make sure that he feels fulfillment in that and that I'm doing enough to get him out of his job quickly enough? You know, what yeah. can I do to, um, you know, get more jobs to where uh, I can free up those jobs to get, you know, it's like all, it's just like this giant thing that you keep feeding and like a giant problem that you need to solve. And there is enough time, you know, and luckily I'm, I have enough time where I've been like, I don't know, dude, I, I don't want to like get to like 50 years old and look back and like, dude, I didn't have shit for time. But I feel like I'm, there's enough time in the day to spend a little bit chasing like that next dream, Yeah. you know, uh, to where, um, you know, it's the slow burn thing where if you work on a little bit here and here and here and here and all of a sudden, oh, I accomplish it. You yeah. Know? So how do you, how do you prioritize like, because you have all these ventures that you're doing. Yeah. Like, how do you <clears throat> pick like, okay, today I need to like, oh. <sighs> figure out my schedule for yeah. my upcoming you know, stunt driving stuff. And then I have like these mechanic host things yeah. and I need to prepare for this. <laughs> and then I also need to finish this customer's right. wiring project. And then also like, how, how oh, do you do dude. it? Dude? So number one, like in order to have like freedom comes with it, like a cost, there's a cost of freedom. And yeah. that is like owning your own business or having the financial freedom in order to be able to say no to something yeah. or tell your, like you were your own boss, give me my own schedule. Okay. Well get yourself work then. How are you gonna do that? You gotta be your own boss. So in order to do that, you have to prioritize what allows that, which is the financial aspect of it. And that's stunt driving. So if I get a call, let's say I had a host gig yeah. and uh motor is like, Hey, we're going to shoot this, this episode on these dates. You know, and two days before, uh, you know, they were like, hey, we need you on this Ford gig uh, two weeks over here. Sorry, Motor Trend, have to go there. Yeah. Because it's a 1099 job, like those, uh, like most of the, like Motor Trend and like those like little gigs like that, they're not paying your benefits, they're not paying health insurance, they're not paying mm. all these things that are kind of crucial for you to have like a sustainable life. Yeah. Right. So I see those as accessories and extra. So yeah. I never bet on those. What I do bet on is a stunt driving because that pays for your health insurance yeah. and all that. And that's become like a real career. Yeah. And I, you know, when I set these contracts, they send you this contract and you have to be, I, dude, I fucking hate that shit. <laughs> but you sit there and you read it and you say, I can't do that because you guys are saying that you own me. And you guys are saying also that, you know, you have like this, uh, what's this, some type of exclusivity clause yeah. where I can only work for you guys and that pays my insurance. So this isn't going to work. That needs to change. They go back. Two weeks later, they come back. Here's this. And then it's still wrong. And then yeah. it has to go back. And then come back. Oh, change it. Finally, everything makes sense. I can now go work with Donut or whatever else I want and get paid for it. And you guys can't be in charge of what work I take. Yeah, that's crazy. You know, and that's yeah. what they all try to do. Yeah. And so I had to do that with Donut and I had to do that with um, with Motor Trend as well yeah. to where I was my own entity and I own all that, yeah. you know. And, um, like heat wave, all these things, that's just me as a person. And like this thing, they don't own any of that stuff. Therefore they can't tell me what I can do with it. Yeah. You know? And if you want me on your show, then you have to be okay with that. Yeah. Cause you they know? want you to be their personality right. who's building their brand right. and not somebody who's building other people's right, brands. Right. Yeah. And then they also like, you know, if they, if this logo shows, they want advertising for it. Yeah. But if it's me. Then yeah. and they agreed to that, then they can't do that as long as I have like a signature release type of thing. Mm. So uh back to your point or your question is you prioritize what is allowing you the freedom, which is the career of stunt driving, 
and yeah. being that driver. Everything else falls in under that. And the wiring was, uh, luckily I had built it up to a level before like stunt driving really took off Yeah. to where, uh, you know, I could schedule it with my employee and take on like, like I wasn't dependent on those jobs. So let's say I do like a truck this year and three cars. You can right. be more selective. Right, right. Well, you know, in the past, I would do like seven cars or yeah. eight cars because it's the whole year. Yeah. But now, you know, it's like, oh, well, I'd rather just do this one Baja truck and maybe another car um, in the year. And that'll go to like my employee and we can, you know, split it up however the labor wants to go. And then we can develop these cool products, which in the long run will become Off the like. the shelf. Yep, exactly. Ship them out. And yeah, and then sit back. You can have somebody fulfill it while yeah. you're driving exactly gtr is off the bridge or whatever <laughs> yeah. yeah like parachuting uh gtr off uh, niagara falls or something yeah <laughs> let's hope you get to do that That'd oh man sick. pretty sweet barrel roll or something yeah you know yeah. um but yeah so you just you pick and choose what's uh well you you prioritize based off of importance that allows you to live your life the way that you want to live it and then everything else kind of falls in line like if you don't have time to do uh, you know, like something else I like to do, like, like say I wanted to go drive the FC. Well, there's, it's always, it's not always green on the other side, but if I just want to go drive like at the track and I got all ready and everything, if stunt got a stunt call and they're like, Hey, we need you to fly out Friday. You're I'm going. not going to the track. Yeah. Like a hundred percent. I'm gone because I know that when I get back, that'll allow me to go back out on the track, mm. you know, because it's like those jobs are like few and far between. If you get enough of them, you could make a pretty good life for yourself. And then um, yeah, it's all like trajectory based, I guess. Like yeah. I see, you know, Wolf Motorsports Wire being like this business with me and Russ, you know, eventually I'm like, dude, you could totally run this thing with me, you know. And I've talked to him about like him taking it over and me taking a small cut. You yeah. know, I'm okay with that because yeah. I'm not like – I live pretty cheap, honestly. You know, <laughs> like I just want to provide for my family, live in a decent spot, have a nice little shop in the back, and then build my own cars – you know, be able to go to the track and have fun. But, you know, that takes some time in order to get to a certain spot first. You can't just strike it rich. You know, yeah. you're never going to, if you take, like, if you have like the, the mentality, like, oh, dude, I'm going to hit the lottery. It's like, bro, you fucking lost, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. And dude, me and my buddy talk about this because he's like a contractor and he's like, dude, how is it that some people get this? And I'm like, bro, I don't even think any of that's real. Like those people are probably very unhappy. Like something happens. Well, I don't want to say that like entirely, but like, you know, like you have to build it yourself. Stop mm. taking the mentality of, oh, this company is going to give me this or that. Just do it on your own. Way more rewarding. You'll get there three times as fast. Build your own schedule. And like, it's okay to have that lifestyle. You know, I mean, obviously it's not for everyone. Yeah. But, you know, some people are like, dude, but you never have any time. It's like, honestly, I feel like I do have time. Yeah. And when you do stuff you like, it doesn't feel like I don't have any time. Yeah. It feels like I'm like doing a bunch of shit that I like to do that I, yeah. you know, 10 years ago I was doing, but I just wasn't getting paid for it. Yeah. You know, and yeah. now you get paid for it. It's like, oh, this is pretty sweet. You know, and then like your checks come and you're like, oh shit, I can abort, like, afford to buy a house. Yeah. And now I can buy that car and yeah. I can drive the car whenever I want. And yeah. like, you still have like other stuff going. And it's like great to have that financial freedom but i mean obviously i didn't have money for like half my life <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. so it's like drift life up until this day because you know eating peanut butter and jelly sandwiches for my backpack yeah um but <clears throat> it's it's that like fuck you keep i don't know i i think it's that like keep doing something that you love just because you love it for long enough and like being, that's it being long enough yeah. And like being dedicated to something and like having passion and like literally dedicating, like the, just learning like the dedication it takes right. to like get Stick there. Like out. that is going to put you on the same plane as people who are famous musicians right. because they did the same thing. Yeah. Like they started out in a garage or a, you know, bedroom making music and just grinding at it for free forever. And right spending their own money to do shows and then they yeah, yeah and then yeah. when you know <clears throat> it's the same concept like it is you know you just you keep at it and you keep going at the skill it's like you have a lot more in common with those people than you would think when you've 
just try to be the best you can at something and not, right. not try and make it about making money. And yeah, just, and st- like you said, stick it. That's the main thing. Cause you, how many of your buddies like, oh, dude, where'd that guy go? Yeah. No, he's, he was in it for like three years, four years, yeah. and then he stopped. But maybe the fifth year, something would have happened. Yeah. Or the sixth year, 100%, seven, eight, dude, now you're in it. Even if you're a terrible driver, if you've been drifting for nine, 10 years, you could probably still make it to FD. <laughs> Dude, if you were like driving Definitely all the time, yeah, <laughs> shots fired. No offense, yeah, yeah. no offense, anybody, but you know. but like you know what I'm saying. If you stick if you it have out. the right program, you like figure all that stuff out. Like right. if you could do the business and the driving, like you can, you know. Yeah, yeah. Well, dude, there's some drivers, no names. Yeah, you know, and you're yeah. like, man, how? You're how like, did they get there? I think you know. I think that's what makes people crazy when they watch like. Pro drifting in the U.S. Sometimes, like they're just like you're just like I could do that. Like, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Give me that car, man. Right, right, <laughs> you know, right. Like, give oh. me the car. Give me the goods. Yeah, but yeah. they put in like they put in the work into that realm, and yeah. they had the financial yep. situation to be able to do it. Yep. And like, I don't, I don't, I think about that sometimes. Like, do you think that if you had, if you had like a blank check to be a professional drifter, mm-hmm. do you think that you would? want to take that route and just skip to being a pro or would you want to go do the, it the way that I did it? Yeah. Dude, I would do it the same exact way. Cause there's no fucking way yeah. I would have put in the same dedication, bro. I was up at, in the middle of the night, like 12 a, or for, for months. Right. Yeah. I my this was my routine, you know, finish work on my car, go eat dinner, you know, spend time with my girlfriend, go back out into the garage. Car was up on jack stands. Cause I had this like mental block. We're like, I would like beat myself. And I'm like, dude, why can't I do well in qualifying? Yeah. You know, there's like too much on the line. I'm thinking about shit that yep. I shouldn't be thinking about yep. when I'm on I've been the line. there. Yeah. I've been there. So I put the car up on jack stands where I could rotate the, the wheels. I'm in the car, you know, and I'm walking myself through balcony, the judge section, or through horse thief mile. Interesting. Or at, uh, they used to do Thursday night drifts yeah. uh, at Irwindale. Mm-hmm. I was like, dude, I got to do the bank. That's like, to me... That's like my goal to do the bank, like enter uh, in fourth gear, yeah, you know, and do the bank, not like shallow on the, yeah, you know, yeah, but yeah. fucking like initiate bank, into yeah. it. And so, dude, I would, I would close my eyes and I would like slow it down and visualize that whole process ultra slow. I'd be like, interesting. Okay, first gear, how it's going to feel with my clutch, you know, like releasing the clutch, what the car feels like. I already know because that's the whole car. Like that car was me and like I was an extension of it, you know, rolling into first, second, you know, where am I going to aim to position the car for my initiation? What kind of initiation? Okay. Am I going to clutch kick? Am I going to e-brake in? I'm going to clutch kick because I saw a die do it and he's the shit. So it's like, okay, boom. Uh, double clutch kick, clutch kick, and then clutch kick in to hold, right? So what, what the hell, what the That's it. If you e-brake in to Irwindale, that's yeah, not it, dude. That's not it. That's not it, dude. Not you can it. do it, but yeah. you got to clutch kick in, yeah. right? So I'm like thinking, like, how do I do it? So again, you know, then you roll in a second, you feel and visualize what the car would feel like losing traction. So you let off a little bit, but you're slipping the clutch to get more traction back into it. All the while coming down, 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 third gear, boom, ah, getting ready, ah, into fourth, clutch kick, what the, loose, up, ah, dump, clutch, in it, dude, hard, ah, da, and you're in, and then you visualize, and then, like, there's one thing I've learned about, like, zones, mm-hmm. is that if you stare at the zone for more than, like, a half second, you fucked up. Yeah. You got to see the zone, and then... Like in your periphery, scan. yeah, this scan, and then you you scan across the zone, and you just look at it for just a, a moment, and then the next, and then the next, and wherever you pick those little points is where the car ends up, and it's like clockwork, dude. And I would do that every fucking night, and I would do it for balcony, and I would do it for the speedway, and I would do it for horse thief, and any track that I like had experience Wild. on, I would do that to where like, bro, I would wake up in the middle of the night like. No. Pulling the e-brake because like, I was would you just, chasing someone. Would you just do like mental laps? Mental laps over like, and over again. And if I if I like forgot about it, yeah. like, wait, what did I just no, start over? Start over, start over. And I just keep starting over. And so when I got on the line. You're just a machine. Dude, I'd fucking done that shit 30 times already, you know? Yeah. So it's almost like, you know, like a sim. But yeah. I was doing it like. A mental simulation? It. Yeah. Wild. Yeah. Dude. And then again, that's that 
when I was talking that's about like a, confidence. That's a matrix shit, dude. <laughs> no, anyone can do it. I don't know yeah. how I got into it. I think I got, someone said something about meditation. I was like, oh yeah, let me try that. And I like sit in the car and then I was like, wait, I could just visualize the car. And I was like, wait, I can't turn the wheel. You're like, oh, jack it up. Jack it yeah, up. So I jack it up and I'm like, oh, dude, this is sweet. Now I can like so do this. Well. Where's my hand? If my hand's in the wrong position at this angle, yeah. then like it's not going to be that smooth. So yeah. I can like, you know, I can do this instead and like still reach everything. Oh, so you're good. like working on hand work. Yeah. And like, like when I close my eyes, because when I look left, I'm not seeing anything. So I yeah. close my eyes where I, like, what would I actually see? Yeah. Well, the clipping point's going to be there. The outer zone edge is going to yeah. be through the window. So it's like you really think, see the zones and like the cones. I don't know if everybody has the ability to do that, that detailed of a visualization. Don't so? I don't know. I don't but know. But if you haven't tried, maybe it would, yeah, maybe that the, would be I, Everybody you. should try that. Yeah. yeah. I think, I think I could probably do it. I have like a pretty good like mental memory and I oh, can like sweet. map stuff out. Yeah. Uh, but I think having like, I think you probably have like a really strong like spatial Awareness or something? Yeah, spatial, like, mental ability. Because, like, that's probably why you can do, like, the wiring harnesses, like, probably yeah. in your head and all that stuff. It's, yeah. it's cool. Yeah. Well, I got to write it all down. But I know yeah. what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. From, like, a... You can visualize, like, where everything's going. Yeah, At least yeah. some of it. I don't think I what? could do, like, a whole loom. <laughs> you could if I showed you the process. Because yeah. you're, you're actually breaking it up to where you're only doing small sections. Mm. And then they link to the other ones. And if you keep track of them... There's only one place that those could go. So you're really just going from A to B first, and then you build from B to C next, and then C to D. And then, you know, it's like, oh, well, this is actually doable once huh. you break it up like that. Um, but, uh, yeah, the whole visualization, that was a game changer. That's when I got all that confidence, and I felt like the fucking king yeah. you know, at the track. I was like, dude, it doesn't matter what this guy's going to do. I know that I can do a better lead run, and then all I have to do is keep him, like, close and when I chase and if they're not entering as fast as I am, then I can just enter in second and just like chill behind them because, yeah. you know, if they're yeah. not in third, that's yeah. kind of like, well, okay, well, they're not going to run away. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. And then if your car is fast and it was pretty quick, um, dude, I wouldn't even change tire pressure, bro. Like yeah. the only time I changed tire pressure was the one time and I fucking crashed. I started doing a lot better in comp when I stopped taking it as seriously the yeah. day of. Yeah. Like if I didn't prep, it wouldn't go like as well because then something would break or whatever. Right. But it, like when I would get there and I just, I don't know, like I would take it seriously beforehand. Yeah. But then like once I was there and like whatever Free happens, flowing. happens. Yeah. Whatever happens, <laughs> yeah, happens. Yeah. Like this is, this is, this is how it's going to go. And if I lose, I lose. If I win, I win. Like yeah. whatever. And like somehow that was just gave me the ability to just, Drive. well yeah. yeah and like i i was like same thing like i'm not gonna change my tire pressure no as long as it feels good that's that's what i'm You're on right. all day like i'm not changing anything else yeah like i'm just gonna run the car like it would be a fun practice day and that's probably the best thing you could do because yeah. i mean you start changing tire pressure and can't even fucking complete a lap you know yeah, like well, let's try these tires yeah. and t to battle this guy <laughs> it's like <sighs> i think my alignment's fucked up I'm like yeah. bro you fucked up already if you're changing alignment at yeah. the event yeah yeah, you yeah, know, yeah just yeah, leave yeah. it alone yeah you know and yeah. then like other people they go all right man what dude you got what are you like 12 psi I'm like dude i've been running fucking 30 the whole time yeah you know yeah man that thing is gripped up and it's like it's really not yeah it's just the car's dialed so yeah. like it works just yeah. like this. fds are they feel oh good. man yeah. it's, they hook up dude i let odie drive the car yeah because i was like odie you gotta drive the car and tell me what you think yeah. he's like well i want to break it i'm like dude you're not gonna break it dude i promise yeah. you <laughs> i was like you're asking the guy who takes care of your car whether or not you're gonna break mine yeah like <laughs> all of the, everything i've learned from like everything goes into my car yeah and i was like dude my car's probably nicer than yours and he's like oh <laughs> fuck no 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 he's getting all pissed off <laughs> and but he gets in my car horse thief mile Dude, I'd never seen him smile so much. Yeah. Because, like, I built my car to be exciting to me and, like, excite yeah. me. Dude, yeah. he got out of my car. He's like, dude, that's the funnest car I've ever driven. Well, yeah, short um, wheelbase. Yeah. Super snappy, but, like, Wah -bah, you know, grippy, sequential yeah. gearbox. Oh, dude. You know, revs to 10 grand. Well, 98.50, which yeah. is basically, like, 10 yeah. grand. You know, turbo car makes all the noises, makes every bit of excitement that something can make. Yeah. And it makes, like, yeah. you know, 560 wheel. Yeah. So it's like. Dude, that, that's like enough for me. Yeah. I don't even want anything more than that. Yeah. Um, but he was so pumped. I was like, dude, that car is sweet, dude. Man, it, it reminds me of like a Banshee. You know what I mean? Like two-stroke yeah. Banshee. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then after that, he was always like, hey, dude, can I drive your car? Yeah. The next event. And I was like, nah, bro. Yeah. 
<laughs> you gave him the you gave him the free taste. Yeah, he let me drive his car, uh, like what his was, demo car. Yeah, what would you think, dude? Not a not bother. as good, dude. The power band, it's not for me. As yeah. much as I admire, like a high strung V8, NA pretty cool. Yeah, his was NA nitrous, made five hundred, dude. It felt like it made like three hundred. The torque that delivery to me, I don't even because know. it's so instantaneous. It just blows it's, the tires uh, off the car. Yeah, you know, like it doesn't matter like, what RPM you're going. No, or, it's like it doesn't matter what RPM even, you're at. You're just spinning right. Why tire. even have a gauge, right? <laughs> so it's like, and then I'm like, the car's not going any faster, but it's spinning yeah. the tire. Yeah, and I'm like, dude, this is so wet. And then you get in like a turbo car, and the way that a turbo ramps up, yeah. and with the RPM and like with an FD low displacement, small displacement turbo. It, the way that it comes on, it's just like, and just faster yeah, and faster and just, how it accelerates, yeah, you know? Yeah, so yeah, like yeah, you're yeah, at the yeah, top yeah. of the, the RPM range and you drop the clutch, that shit's fucking moving, bro. Yeah. Like it's going yeah. and like you can feel every bit of it. Even if you have no torque up there, yeah. you have like just that acceleration factor. So it's like, yeah. I, I, I just, yeah. I, I'm, I'm sold on rotary. <laughs> once I drove Ilya's car, like this, I want to drive it now that he, once he fixed the steering, but like, yeah, dude. Just, and his isn't even like, his isn't even that <laughs> dude, crazy. If I get my car going, hopefully it'll be done in a year. Like okay. I got to take the motor out and fix the front end. I'll let you drive. I it. was sold. Yeah, I was sold. I was like, this is because it, it's crazy. It just has like, it has like enough power to keep the tires spinning right. at the right speed yeah, yeah, to yeah. have a lot of traction yeah, and yeah. like every RPM. That's because it doesn't have torque. So it's yeah. not blowing the tires immediately. It's yeah. like ramping into it, yeah. which a slower acceleration of the tire, like your wheel speed is going to give you more traction. Yeah. And the chassis you just know? has a ton of grip. So yeah. like, feel, it's so good. Yeah, dude, it's great, dude. I have dreams about it still. Like I was saying, like I'd wake up and like, oh shit, like pulling the e-brake, imagine I'm chasing someone, they did this and I need to react. Yeah, You know, like I still my routine every single night, even like last night, yeah. if I can't go to sleep, I imagine myself at balcony coming no around the back. Way. I swear to God, dude, coming around the back. What's the car doing? How's it feel? And then rolling into it. And then when I shift, don't even have to hit the clutch. Just lift off the throttle a little bit. Boom. Tires spinning. Come back into it. Third gear entry clutch kick. Good to go. Good to go. And it's just like that feeling. And then I'm, I'm asleep. Like oh, every dude. night, because I love you're, drifting. Dude. You're like, counting sheep as I do, imagining but, drifting a balcony. Yeah, that's at balcony. so sick. No other track. It's always balcony. Always, I start behind the horseshoe and I come into it, and then like you know, go from there. And yeah. then the entry is where it stops every time. I just got to drive balcony for the first time. No way. Yeah, that was my first. Yeah. When like, did you go? Oh, when you crashed. Yeah. Sorry, man. Yeah, that's okay. And it's it part of it. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> but it's cool. It's fun. Yeah, yeah. It's great. I like the like. I like the fast. It's tricky because it's kind of – it's like tricky or technical because you don't realize that pocket that you can get into the far left. Yeah. But that's like really the ticket. Yeah. And then staying in the throttle long enough uh, to get out there because if you're having to get more throttle after you've transitioned over, you probably weren't going fast enough on initiation. Yeah. It's like so – it's, well, it's fun. You can, you can grab I'll third and just – Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty sweet track. Yeah. It's and fun. there's different like ways. Some people do it like yeah. backwards and this and that, but that big loop is probably uh, like one of the best tests. Yeah. So counting sheep at balcony. Yeah, <laughs> dude. I don't, I'm going to start doing that. Dude, it's, I mean, that was like, that was what got me past my mental block to where I'd be sitting, getting ready for qualifying, right? They did groups. So I'd be sitting in my car and like all of a sudden I'd wake up, dude. I'd wake up for someone's, hitting my hood. Hey dude, let's go. Cause I fucking fell asleep in my car, bro. That's how relaxed I was from like doing that routine. And so Interesting. now until so that meditation practice, scenario, whatever that was like now you're at the track and because you're there, bro. that's like your calming. Uh, yeah. Your happy place is now the track. You've right. turned your happy in place in your my mind car. is your happy place. Yeah. Oh, wow, that's crazy. And so it's just a, like the most calm place I could be. I'm so relaxed. I just fell asleep. I woke up. Oh, time to go to business. You know, here, let me, <sighs> let me do one more lap. What's one lap compared to fucking 10,000 you just did or whatever. You know, if you're doing it huh. every single night, even if you did it three, you know, or two times every night, you know, at the end of the week, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, four, that's 14, you know, multiply that by fucking months. You know, you've got, I mean, it's the same thing with like Sims. Yeah. Maybe it's, it's different not though. As, I, I think I would, the Sim is great mm -hmm. in its own realm. 
and it is helpful and like you can do 10,000 laps on balcony and yeah. you will get better at the course but yeah. I, but I think there's something I think you're onto something with the mechanical feel of the car yeah so I had a problem going onto a sim because I couldn't feel shit yeah and I was like dude this isn't gonna work for me yeah and then I got on a, a sim that actually like felt decent and I was like yeah. okay I could probably have fun with this yeah it's still not like yeah. that mental thing because when you I know your own car is, I think the mental because like the sim is just muscle memory right and like a visual feedback of like what you're doing with the yeah. muscle memory but I think I think you using the mental image and like replaying the track and like using that as like a calming right 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 piece is like probably one of the most insightful things I've ever heard oh, I think I think people know yeah well it's also like you would like notice mistakes too because like you're in you're pretending like you're driving but then you're also visualizing what that would look like from the outside yeah. And if, like, I had a spotter and he's like, dude, why weren't you on the throttle right there? Like, or during yeah. the transition, yeah. you know, fucking blip the throttle or something. Yeah. So, like, if I missed that blip, yeah. like, on the transition into the infield, I'd yeah. start over until I got it. You know, and, and then if I missed, like, something earlier on, it's like, dude, why would you miss that? Because you're thinking about something too far ahead. You, like, start here. So, start here and work for it. So, you just, like, You're also, like, re checklist, you're, checklist. Yeah, you're retraining your mind yeah, yeah, yeah. on how to do it. Uh, linearly instead of like all at once. Right, right, right. And like some people, ah, they don't have to so do clever. that. But I, well, I don't know if it, I think it was like out of desperation because yeah. again, when you get to a certain age, because I was like a little bit older than like say like a 20 year old. Yeah. With a 20 year old, you have nothing to lose. Yeah. You know, you get to 32 and it's like, fuck dude, I need to make something out of my life. Yeah. You know, I got to qualify first before anyone even sees me. Yeah. You zero out, you don't even get seen. Yeah. So I was like, dude, I was to a point where I was like, fuck, dude, I keep doing these competitions, wasting all this time, and I zero out. Or maybe I put numbers up, but it, like, it doesn't make me get into the show. Yeah. But then it was like, how can I do that? Oh, I got to keep doing this. Well, I can't afford to do it, so I'll do it in my mind. And then, yeah. you know, I came up with that whole thing. And, dude, again, like, it's still what I go back to, you know, and just, yeah, it's pretty nice. Do you use that for the stunt driving stuff at all? I don't need to, bro. Because yeah. I, I feel once I got to that spot – you're now, when I sit in the car, yeah. dude, I feel so confident. Like this mm. dumbest shit. Dude, one time, uh, on set, Twisted Metal, a uh, huge shot, right? The John Doe comes up uh, to the lead actress. Like a, a missile just hit her thing. But the stunt was I come through this or I come in and I slide the car through this giant explosion because – the missile hit the car in front of me and I slide through and I got to like stop, right? Like here's her flipped over car and she crawls out and like, I go right next to her. And then I open up the door and she's right there and I'm, oh, you know, I save her. Um, and it was the end of the day and the director's like, oh, he's losing his stuff. And uh, the main, one of the, I think it's the, uh, who was it, dude? Everyone's going to fry me for this, bro. Uh, it was like some producer, executive or, no, yeah. I don't know. So Whatever. the director is who I answered to, but it was the other person. Yeah. Or maybe it was the first AD was like, hey, we got to break this up. And the director was like, no, that's who it was. First AD, oh, we got to break this up into this shot and blah, blah. And um, the director's like, dude, he's been driving and nailing the shots all day. Yeah. But there's like 200, 300 people on set, right? Yeah. And they're like, well, if not, we're going to have to push it till Monday and we're going to have to break it up. Or we just break it up and, you know, do it in two separate uh, shots. And she was like, well, it's going to look lame that way. You know, because then it wouldn't be one fluid stun. It'd be like yeah. break, break, you know, and then yeah. like what happened type yeah, of thing yeah, 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 versus yeah. just one movement. And like and she like, walks straight. This, bro. Yeah, she walks over straight over. She's like, Aaron, you think you could do that in one hit? And I was like, yeah, I got it. And yeah. like the coordinator, I look over at him and he's just like, and I'm like, oh. and then I'm walking over and I'm like, dude, what did I just do? And I was like, yeah. nah, dude. I was like. It's I got it. Sliding a car. Yeah. I was like, bro, this is, you couldn't get any more Aaron Parker. Like yeah. I got this shit, <laughs> you know? And he's like, you do realize the pressure you just put on yourself. Right. And I was like, bro, it's good. And he's like, well, do you need a, you need a practice? I was like, is there going to be an explosion in the practice? And he's like, no. And I was like, well, then I don't want to do the practice. Yeah. Cause yeah. that's the thing that's going to fuck me up. Yeah. Yeah. You know? And he was just like, all right. So get to the one, three, two, one. I still fucking, when they're calling that shit, like yeah. I get the same feeling, yeah. but dude, I'm not thinking about shit. If I'm not thinking about anything, I know I'm in a good spot. So I'm just, yeah. all I'm focusing on is visualizing. And I use the same fucking thing, right? Because yeah. when I was backing up, walking, I was like visualizing coming through that and where I needed to see the car to come in through there. And like, I guess like gauging that whole spatial thing 
coming into like where the car was to stop because if you over blew it, you're gonna fucking hit the car. Yeah. You can't use that. And you just ruin the shot. Yeah. Probably not gonna happen again. They yeah. might even cut the whole scene. Yeah. You know. Um, so three, two, one, action, go. Come around the corner. Boom! Explosion. Come through. I'm like holding the e-brake. I'm like, wait, nah, no, a little further, a little. Okay, now coming. Stop right there, dude. Fucking nailed it, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. And then yeah, 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 yeah. I remember them telling me, hey. When you stop, kick the door open like you're going to get out, but don't get out. Yeah. That way they can stitch in, you know, uh, they can pick up with him getting out of the car right there. So I fucking kick the door open and it sits right there and we stop. And then I look over and I see the director. She's like, she's <laughs> like, yeah. And I'm just like, okay, this is my chance to play it ultra cool. Like yeah, this yeah. every day of the week. <laughs> yeah, right? yeah, yeah, in yeah. my heart, I'm like, fuck yeah, dude. Yeah. You fucking did it. Yeah, you yeah, did yeah, yeah. So I get out of the car, all normal. You know, I'm looking at it, walk away, and then, like, I walk over to the coordinator, and then he's just like, dude, what the fuck? And I'm like, bro, I don't know if I could do that again, <laughs> but I did it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah he please always tell told, me they got that yeah, shot. And he was just like, dude, good, good fucking work. And there's another guy on set who actually did uh, the Dark Knight. He's yeah. like a coordinator. Sick. And he came over and he's like, dude, that, man, that's that's not easy, man. That's not easy. And I was just like, you know what? I just visualize it, and I fucking nailed it. And I was like, and because he always told me, or my, the coordinator, he's actually a good buddy of mine now. He was like, dude, re- you got to remember, you're never the man. You're only the man for that shot. Yeah. So, like, take it for what it is. When you get them right, fucking be humble. When you get them wrong, still be fucking humble, but you got <laughs> yeah. to fucking eat it. You know, yeah. just tell them you fucked up. Yeah. Um, and there's been time I fucked up on that set as well. Um, yeah. yeah. But uh, that shot. It's like a high risk. Yeah. Situation. The more you you visualize, I truly believe like that, that's always done good for me because the mm-hmm. other one I didn't visualize yeah. and I got it wrong, the approach. Yeah. And I thought something else that was going to happen and, it, you know, there's a camera car involved and I just like kind of ruined the shot. Yeah. But, you know, um, who knows? They, they, I mean, they still used it. Yeah. So maybe what I thought was a full fail was actually like yeah. decent to them. Yeah. You know? yeah. So, yeah. Holding yourself to a, a high standard. Yeah, yeah. And, I mean, you do that when you drive. You're like, fuck, yeah, I should have yeah. done this. Could have done that. It goes back to what you were talking about earlier about, like, seeing clips of you driving. Yeah, And you're yeah. like, oh, that entry was so weak. lame. Yeah. yeah. And they're just like, this is great. What are you talking about? You know? <laughs> it's like, oh, dude, you did a sick lap. I'm like, that was my fucking worst lap yeah, yeah. I've ever done yeah. in the car. Like, so lame. But, I mean, it goes that kind of – it depends on what type of person you are as well. Yeah. yeah. So – but yeah, <laughs> crazy life, dude. Dude, pretty crazy life. Yeah. Uh, really thankful uh, and you know uh, grateful that I'm like able to sit here and like tell it back that way. Yeah, and like still have or feel like I'm doing something like inspire, you know, like other kids like with the Motor Trend show. I was yeah. able to do like my own like episode, and that's what the FC was. Yeah, like oh, you should do this and this. And this. I'm like, dude, this is the way you can get into one of these cars ultra cheap, have a cool fucking sweet Japanese inspired turbo car. Yep. Not go crazy with electronics. Factory ECU. Yep. Upgrade the turbo. Manual boost controller. ECU does the rest. Yeah, you can't go over like 16, 17 psi. Yeah. Still Bump, makes so sweet like power. Three fifty. Yeah, yeah. Good to go. Yeah. Weld the diff. And then just work on aesthetics, you know, yeah. good, you know, seats, maybe a small angle kit, not t- nothing too crazy. Yeah. You're going to have a blast. Oh, dude, 300, 350 max yeah. all day, bro. Yeah. Like, just give me the track, some friends. Yeah. I can't wait to get out there with it. So, like, yeah. it's been a while since I've, like, gotten to, like, drive with other people. So Just as a hobby and not yeah, a job. Yeah. I mean, it's still fun. Like, I'm, I'm happy because I got my kids, my wife. Everything's yeah. going good. You know, bought a house. Yeah. Congrats. Um, doing all, all this. It. Yeah, all this stuff. And then I find myself under this shitbox car in the garage, <laughs> just like <laughs> loving it, dude. Yeah. Just oil. Yeah. Oh, no problem. It's dirty. It's shitty. Eventually, I'll get to clean it all up. But yeah. you know what? Right now, good to go. Yeah. So, yeah. I guess, I guess you've <laughs> taken the time and like – done the right moves to continue and be able to have your dream of like wrenching on cars into your years. Like you're just getting started, dude. Yeah. 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 I hope it remains that way. And, uh, you know, I'm able to like pass this passion on to like, you know, like my kids and like, yeah, I'm afraid to give them too much. Like, I don't want to give them a lot Yeah. in terms of like spoon feeding them. Yeah. Like, I feel like there's something to 
struggle oh, yeah. that makes yeah. you eager to have and build something. Yeah. You know? Yeah, you got to um, buy them an automatic Civic. Oh, four door. Yeah. Freaking shitty color. Lime green. Oh, man. And I was like, so, flat like spot one of the thing. wheels on purpose. So they're like, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. So they're like, Dad, how come I can't have one of your cool cars? We're like, hey. Yeah. Like, bro. But, you know, I guess so that like like the FC and the FD, it's like, dude, I have two cars. I have two kids. Yeah. What if I just built them and like one day I'll like stop driving them yeah. and then they can have them. And those imagine your like kids here. tandeming. And, oh, and bro, bro, that's yeah. like something that's on another level too. Cause yeah. little Mila, uh, she like sleeps on me. She's yeah. like daddy's girl. Yeah. Uh, she's like a replica of me. Everything she does. Like other relatives are like, why is she whining? I'm like, well, I fucking did that. <laughs> or they're like, Oh, why is she staring off into nowhere? It's like, well, I fucking did that shit yeah. too. <laughs> you know, but like, I got her this little balance bike and she's like just learning it. And now she's like jamming on it. You know, she's like doing circles around her cousin who is like a little bit older, yeah. but doesn't have it. Yeah. And I'm like, fuck, dude, it's so rewarding to yeah. watch her do that yeah. and like go down our driveway and then steer and not go in the street. Yeah. But, you know, it's like, yeah. man, if you start them early, you yeah. know, that's all they need. They don't need a ton of toys. They just need to be interacted and they need your time. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, I hope that I can like work on the cars with them and teach them like how, or show them how like rewarding it is to have a working car at the track. If you put the time into it yeah. and do it correctly type of thing. You know? Yeah. So yeah, pretty cool. That's awesome. <laughs> Dude. Uh, is, good, is this a good out or what? I think so. <laughs> yeah. We've been, we've been going. Yeah. I think we're about to run out of hard drive. Oh, honestly. all good, man. Yeah. No, I'm happy to talk, dude. Uh, yeah. Probably a million other stories, but maybe we should uh, call yeah. it quits. And if we have to revisit it at some point, dude, yeah. I'm fucking down, man. Yeah. Yeah, anytime. Yeah, this is fun. I'm glad you can come <laughs> break in the new studio. I can... Uh, it's a good time. AKA, like, part of one of the rooms in my house. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, this works great. Yeah, it's perfect. You got to do it somewhere. Yeah. Dude, I still work on my car in my garage on the floor. Dude, I did transmission three times two weeks ago yeah on the floor yeah well i use those quick jacks but yeah i saw that i, yeah. I want some of those so bad dude pretty good man yeah. for if you can't put it like a lit well you got room bro you might even put in one of those half lifts you think so i think so unless you're worried about like the two posts being there the quick mm. jacks are cool but they're kind of a pain if you're not using them yeah you have the you know they're under the car but your car's low yeah the fc's low so yeah. it's like getting them under there's a pain unless yeah. they stay under there and your rear bumper is low enough to where you can always back up into it. Yeah. And it's not going to hit anything. And then when you're not using them, like the hydraulic thing leaves the lines in the way. It's kind of like mm. – so if you get that other one, as long as the, there's no lines on the ground, I hate lines when they're on the ground because then your jack goes over it. Yeah. Or you trip, trip on, on them. Yeah. yeah. Pain in the ass. But, uh, yeah. Dude. <laughs> Keep going, man. I know. Yeah, I'm, I'm, dude, I'm totally, I don't plan on, I, my plan though is to go hard for like another three, four years and then start pulling back. And hopefully Wolf Motorsports Wire is like self-sustaining at that point. Yeah. My, my, uh, employee is not like a partner. Yeah. And he can quit his job and he can do that full time and have fun with that, whatever way direction he wants to go with it. Cool. Yeah. Pretty simple guy. Like I don't want to build into a million dollar company. I just want it to be sustainable yeah. and make us too happy yeah. and still do projects that we like yeah. and then drive for a living, make enough to, you know, make sure that everything is covered, build my own cars, uh, have a little savings in case something bad happens, you know, uh, maybe build like a fucking underground bunker or something. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, you know, start breeding bullies. So yeah. All right. We got <laughs> <sorry. laughs> Remember I was talking about bullies. Yeah. So. Yeah. Great callback. Yeah. 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 That's, that's how you know. Yeah. That's how you know you've listened to the entire thing. <laughs> yeah. But sweet, dude. Yeah. Thanks, man, for having me on. It's been yeah. a blast. Uh, Maiden yeah. voyage. Not too bad, dude. Yeah. We, thing, uh, uh, we've been planning this for like a while. Very true. Yeah. Worked Probably out. like a year, maybe yeah. even more. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I always like uh, like our community, you know, like you sitting down with like the drivers and people who are really in it just for like the joy and passion of drifting. Yeah. You know, it's like something I do miss quite a bit, like being out at the track and, um, you know, um, being well, involved. So you're, you're still one of us. I know. I know. Yeah. But you know, sometimes I'm, if I'm like, I'm watching videos of people drifting. I'm like, I don't even have a car right now. Yeah. You know, 
And I got yeah. the FC, so that's come. come You're back. almost there. Almost there, man. Yeah, it's it's a good feeling. So yeah, Pumped, thanks for dude. coming out. Yeah. Thanks everybody. Thank you guys.